Welcome to the show, guys. We got a great one lined up for you today. If you'd like to support this channel, there are PayPal and Patreon links in the info box below. And I'd like to announce a new policy for Ball Buster Show, all shows going forward. So, you can read this also in the info box below this video. The audience is begging for a reasoned discussion, not a second grade playground testosterone saturated over talking dumpster fire where nothing is established or affirmed save for noise and utter chaos. Everyone entering the Ballbusters Discord voice chat is clean slated. That means any bad history between guests and panel members will be put aside and not spoken of. There are three zero tolerance rules, however. Number one, no ad homes. That is attacking the man or woman in lieu of the argument. Number two, no scatter gunning. One topic at a time. Each will be exhausted to conclusion before moving to the next and be prepared to support every claim. And finally, rule number three, be polite. Speak slowly and coherently. If any of these three are violated, you will be server muted immediately, then kicked from the Ball Busters voice chat. Any questions? Hopefully not. Let me let these guys loose. How's it going out there, Ball Busters? Woo! Hey. <laughs> You fantastic. Yo, yo. What it is. Yo, yo, what it is? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. I'm chocolate saying it, right? I got to be me, right? Just <laughs> be up, you. That, that's all I want is, is there... just to be you. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> Always going to be here. Yo, yo, walking the dog. <laughs> yeah good evening everyone saturday evening what's going on out there black swan saturday morning on my plane black swan black swan yep, the black swan and the very stubborn rebellion against the black swan even though people seem to understand it out there who who's rebelling against it? Well, quite the contrary. I want to find somebody who can make us a little digital counter that counts down the days till ballers get it. Current <laughs> estimates running at a year. <laughs> that that's awesome. We actually might need that because it seems Nathan, like they still don't get it. <laughs> Nathan, they never argued that there was any geometrical horizon. They they never did that. You know that, right? Isn't it wonderful? Them denying the very tenets of their own religion. We never claimed we had a geometrical, physical edge of a sphere for boats to go over. What kind of crazy world were you living in where we were arguing for a geometrical sphere? We've never done that. Oh, really? <laughs> what about all these thousands of examples where you've done just that then? Yep, it's yep. to the point where they're making me actually think about the Mandela now. Hi. Because like it's like it never happened, right? So it's like a Mandela effect. It's yeah, like they try, they, no, they, they're trying to Jedi work. mind trick people into but thinking, oh, we've off, never argued off. for that. The, the Mandela works on everything. This only works on the ballers. <laughs> I, I think you play some cho with chocolates Jedi mind trick. There is no geometric horizon here. What about this one yeah. model? There is no geometric yeah. Yep. That's what, that's what it seems to me. I mean, when Rump is somebody who's clearly come on here and been arguing with us for years about his geometrical geometric horizon being physical, um, and then to say he never did ever, ever, ever. I mean, that's if that's not a an attempt at a Jedi mind trick, I don't know what is. But he did. He did. We played the recording. But but no, we don't. No. And he still denies it. <laughs> we do, we do, we do. 
<laughs> but we don't. But we, but we don't. do. <laughs> yep. Yeah, maybe. Yes, for sure. No, not definitely. It doesn't matter. I'm 100% right. Oh, can, can I pl plug the uh, beautiful Betty Van Velsen's Discord server and say if you do want to join this chat, you can. There's a link below Quantum Eraser's video. So if you want to join the live stream, you can answer the questions. The topics today are going to be flight and how it disproves. Well, I'll let QE get into it in the detail that he will because that's going to be the first subject. So I'm going to summarize it now. But also, obviously, the black swan, which we're already talking about now. So if you do want to join, click the link in the info box and join the FE Science versus Pseudoscience Discord server. Yes, we're going to start with flight today because <laughs> last week I said, okay, we're going to do the black swan and flight. And we did the black swan and there was no time left. So the only way, the only thing I could think of to fix that problem to get through flight because we wouldn't get through it again is to go through flight, then the black swan. Uh, I thought that was a pretty good idea. What do you think? Go for it. We ain't starting yet. I'm not ready. Maybe some yeah. time for super chats then? Please. Yeah, you got two super chats from Alexander, and he says, terminate the ball, and then thumbs up. And you got one from Emma UK, and she says, love it, and a heart, and wave, and pray. So Take a shower. <laughs> well, they're watching and see what you can, else you got, right? What else I got? Yeah, like the is is that black swan taking off in flight? Maybe. Boom boom. <laughs> 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 nice one, Betty. Yeah, I thought it made a nice bridge. But yeah. If you have someone like QE, you won't go for that, of course. Okay, can I give a quick shout out to Vitamin X in the chat? He says, These are not the geometric horizons you are looking for. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> this isn't it surprising how such a simple concept, which everyone knows, the horizon can be so utterly mumbled and jumbled and fumbled and stumbled. I, I'm just sitting back. Thinking, what in the world are you people talking about? Two horizons, three horizons. Does anyone see these horizons? Anyone? No. no, never. Never even spoke about different horizons. It was always the the boats, the buildings. Everything's always being obscured by the horizon. It's something is at the horizon. We've even been, even been told that, oh, you can get to the horizon. It's It, it was never multiple horizons. Two, three horizons? What? <laughs> I mean, well, if, it, if people if don't it see was that. Chocolate, if it was chocolate, they would have said, okay, that boat is disappearing by the second horizon. <laughs> and that lighthouse is disappearing by the third horizon. They never talked that way before. No, or, or better yet, the... the the geometric horizon is the horizon you can't see? That's when the, the hell has anybody seen that, said that before? That's the one. That's the one I really like. I heard it like four times last night. It's the one that's invisible. You, No one sees the <laughs> geometric horizon. Boy, I got a shocker coming for you after flight. But yeah, good one, Chocolate. Yeah, that's the one that I was so, just like, wait a minute. <laughs> Go ahead, Nathan. I was just going to say, the, the, the nice, succinct summary is that they have asserted, by way of a model, that we have a geometric horizon. It's part and parcel of their model. And we don't have a geometric horizon. It's just as simple as that. It's not really that complicated when you boil it down. Obviously, you've got to have a reasonably good understanding of the modus tollens argument and how it's structured so that you can extrapolate that out and defeat any arguments that come alongside it. If people take apart the logic of modus tollens, they're taking apart the logic that has the premise of the Earth being a sphere within the logical consistency. So I think it was Dark Star or someone similar tried to take apart the logic and said, well, your Q statement is false. It's like, well, the Q statement is related to your Bohr model. So if you're going to try and debunk it based on the logic uh, or the premise, premises that the 
logic is based on, you're debunking the sphere. And then when you move on to try and claim that we have more than one horizon, there is only one horizon. And in their model, their horizon is geometric. It's a geometric model. So if you can debunk the geometric horizon, you are debunking their model. You can't have two horizons, there is only one. So they are making the assertion that the horizon, singular, that we see is, by virtue of their model and its claims, geometric. It's just that simple. And if it's not geometric, it's not a ball. That's not a sphere. End of argument. Game over. They're checkmated in every single respect. So the first checkmate, they say the horizon we see is not the geometric horizon. <laughs> so game over. Yeah, that's what we argue. So that's the first way. Second way, they say, well, the horizon we see is the geometric horizon. It's, it's just loomed above itself. Ergo, not a geometric horizon then. Or they say we have two horizons. Geometric horizon is the basis for the apparent horizon. Abundant. Well, if it's a function of geometry, it's geometric, like their model. But it isn't. It's not where it is in the model. So it's not geometric. So they are literally checkmated at every turn with this argument. And the last one, the fourth one, is, like I said before, if you, if you actually attack the logic, you say, well, your P or your Q statement's incorrect. Well, the P statement's about the nature of the world as a sphere. So if that's incorrect, welcome to Flat Earth. <laughs> so they're screwed every single way. And I just, we're going to bark about this for the next 12 months, I just know it. But it's because <laughs> even though we're saying uh, the globe side don't get it, some of our own side don't get it either. And when they do, they'll realise that we're debunking Earth geometry. That's the simple and most well, simple way you can summarise it. We're, we're debunking globe geometry. Their horizon in their geometric model is obviously geometric, and we don't have one in reality. We've debunked it. Very well summarised, Nathan. Outstanding. Exactly. If I may add something to that. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, let's, let's think about it for a moment carefully. Ships going over the horizon. It is probably the very first argument that we were confronted with as little kids. The, thirst, the first thing they tell us is the primary argument. The geometrical horizon that you could imagine to be there if you basically don't understand how perspective and optics work. And yeah, we just got it. We got, we got kind of their original argument, the, the primary conditioning. We got it. We got them now. We yeah, got them by the and, balls. Yeah, and that's why this is so detrimental and it has made them have to change up their argument, their strategy, what, what you know, the data points they want to use. Because, again, nobody was talking about three, four horizons, you know, two months ago. A year ago, two years ago, nobody was talking about that. All of a sudden, we go right at the, the, the crucial point, the horizon. The horizon's always been the horizon, okay? <laughs> so to make them all of a sudden now talk about horizons we can't see and three, four horizons, I mean, come on. It's so evident. And Arwen, you're right. This is the, one of the first things, I, at least for me, that I remember hearing about, you know, when people used to think it was flat, oh, it'd be boats go over the, 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 the curve, you know, or, or the edge. And then they use that as the proof of the glow. Well, the boats aren't actually going over the edge, they're going over the curve. And then what they didn't tell you was, it's actually the edge of the curve, right? <laughs> the edge of their geometric horizon, of their ball. So yeah, the, it, this, this is the crucial point right here. Yep. I'm done. It's the original argument that they use yeah. as a rebuttal for common sense to dissuade us. To yeah, start it's what, it's what you tell your kid when you're at the mind. beach. Yeah, it's the simple thing you tell your kid at the beach. Oh, look, you see that boat? It's disappearing because it's going over the curve, right? That's something even a kid can understand. That's why they put it that way. Now we've taken that curve, that edge of a sphere, and <laughs> destroyed it. Showed that it's not an actual physical place. It's apparent. It's always been apparent. 
And that's the point. Chocolate. They hijacked perspective. Now they want it back. Nah. Backsies out here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't change your radius. Can't, can't take it back, man. And you can't just say, and Jedi mind trick people into thinking, oh, well, we've never argued that. Yeah, yeah. We've all heard it. We've got it on tape. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know how you guys think that works out, but anyway. This is exactly else. the premise in 1984 by Orwell, was that, you know, they would switch. There was three main continents at war all the time, and... Each one of them would do this. They would say, well, East Asia has always been at war with Eurasia or whatever the names were, I forget. And then they would switch it periodically and people would say, oh, yeah, it was always that way. Always. This is exactly what Orwell was talking about. They're trying to switch sides, take our side. And we know a lot of us have been around for going on five years in this. And that was their argument all the time was forget about perspective. We're going to take the orthographic view and do our curve calculator. That's a hard edge obstructing things, physical, not looming, none of that. They refused to allow those factors in that are real world factors. They refused it for, for five years. Now, all of a sudden, the black swan comes along, which is people misunderstand that. I know you guys have already explained it, but you know, just one more time can't hurt, right? That it doesn't mean there are not multiple black swans. It means it only takes one of them with the modus tollens argument is the key to say this is just disproof right here. Why go any farther? Why dance around with laser beams and sugar water and all these other things when you've got this one thing that they cannot refute with their own model to the point where even before a lot of flat earthers get it, the ball earthers are trying to make up multiple horizons and steal our point for five years, which was, it was not a physical obstruction. It was perspective and conditions and whatever else, you know, was in a given situation. So they're doing Orwell's switch, you know, the, the memory hole they're doing. Um, is I, I would rather use that term than Mandela, obviously, but, and they're, um, trying to, you know, this, which is basically trying to take our argument that we've used all this time, and then just, you know, the, the flat earth side a lot of times are throwing away the most important point that cannot be argued away that was their own assertion for five years. And I don't know how else any of us can explain that to get it across to flat earthers. Because the ball earthers get it. That's why they made up all those new horizons. Precisely. Yeah, I agree with memory hole as well, as opposed to Mandela. They're just trying to chuck it down the memory hole. But isn't it sweet when you've got three years of debates that you can just go back to and prove the outright liars they are when they completely change their story and claim that they've said something all along and you can just go, hmm, let's just go back 100 shows and see what they were saying. Oh, no, they're just liars. So, yeah, memory hole in their mind. Yeah, it might work to just change your narrative and change what you've said and claim you've always said it. But unfortunately, there's like a massive, great big, long paper trail of you claiming something completely contrary to your current position because of your death of the globe based on its own parameters. Quite amusing that they have to lie through their back teeth, though. And that's what we'll get from now on. A lot of liars, because that's all they can do. Lie. And, and the latest one I've seen is that they're trying to say that the premise P... They they mistook the second part of it as another premise, which means they don't know what don't know anything about logic. They're saying that actually that P is a non sequitur. They're saying it does not follow that if the Earth is a certain radius, then you can see no farther than whatever the, you know, depending on the observer height. So if they're claiming it's a non sequitur, I'm helping them define their own argument right now because <laughs> they thought it was a second premise. That's quick, all quick. based on our refraction. Yeah, but yeah, they, they, they keep a holding on to that machination, that clearly not empirically based right, but, interpretation of optics that hasn't that's a, it switched around. They claim that extreme refraction is actually the norm and that the lack of refraction will distort things. That's what they basically, that's what it comes down to. That's what their machination comes down. 
Right, but my my point right now is they're tr they're trying to turn the premise p into a non sequitur based on their own curve calculators, based on their assumption of r, that they're trying to say it does not follow that you can only see a certain distance to the horizon. And in other words, they're saying we were telling you lies for five years when they yeah, say yeah. that p is wrong. The, 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 the quick route around that. <sighs> the quick route around that is to go, oh, we've got a really easy quick reference. Just go to the Metabunk curve calculator, scroll down to their model, and there's a nice little red X. And the label next to that X is horizon. And you know where that little X lies? Lies on the geometric physical obstruction you used to call the curve that the boats were going over. That's where that X is in your model. And it's there because it's a geometric model that's claiming that X obscures things in the distance. So if people now deny that they've actually been arguing for an earth curve obstruction, just take them to that red X and go, that's your horizon. It's geometric. And if they say, no, we've got two, here's another, the, the horizon on this day is over here. You go, well, then it's number one, we've only got one horizon, got two. But number two, that's your horizon this geometric horizon in your geometric model. And again, when they start to claim, no, 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 the horizon is actually moving with the function of the geometry, and we label that function of geometry refraction. No, no, no. Your geometry refraction is based on the radius, which gives you the edge, the geometric edge, the one you don't have anymore. So <laughs> it all falls to pieces. Yep. Yes, sir. The... I might take uh, a little umbrage to their lying. It, I hate to use stereotype fallacies, but even even taking that into account, I, I don't think collectively they're lying. I think this is a clear case of Hanlon's razor. Don't attribute to malice what can be explained by stupidity. I I don't think... I don't even think they know what they said back then. I, I think you're giving them too much credit, man. From where I'm sitting, I mm, could be wrong. No, mm, I, I, well, I have uh, there's only one specific thing. example. So when I'm talking about they, I'm talking about the specific examples where I've highlighted it on the debate. So oh. for an example, Rumpus. Right. They specifically had a, a section cut out and played back to him. And then he's paraphrased it. You know, he had it pretty much to hand written down and then started paraphrasing it, changing it, claiming bits were added two minutes later that he couldn't cite. Just lying. So it, there are specific examples of people lying. I'm not just throwing it out there as a stereotyping that, policy. That's actually another Orwell book, Animal Farm. That's what they did through the whole book is slowly change bits of lines and then change entire lines and change the original message. That, that was the line going through the whole book. You know, I have a new terminology that I've created for what they typically do, the extreme double thing. What I call it is double down syndrome. <laughs> double down syndrome. Yeah, I see where you're going with it. Yes, I see it. Do you understand, right? Yes. Good. Okay, listen, we're, we're, <laughs> let's... We're going to go into flight right now. I know no one wants to do this, but this will be quick. And then we'll get into the black swan because that's what I know everyone's here for. Everyone wants to talk about. But I think this one is just as deadly. It's not sexy. Because the black, you know, the black swan is new. And, you know, it's got a new red dress on. But this one is an abject killer. And it's simple. Flight. Since the Earth, as we're told, is 25,000 miles in circumference, radius 3959 miles, then pilots traveling for one hour at a typical cruising speed of 500 miles an hour to simply maintain altitude would constantly have to adjust their altitude downwards to compensate for the curvature and descend on average 2,789 feet every minute. Now... To negotiate this drop, I really don't care. The plane can barrel roll, split S, wing over, tail slide, slow roll, Cuban 8, falling leaf, chandelier, the hokey pokey. I don't care. 
but it must descend. And everyone on the plane will know it. That's the point. Is this clear? How many miles of vertical drop geometric must be negotiated over a distance of 500 miles on a ball with a circumference of 25,000 miles? Answer, 31.7 miles. How many feet are in 31.7 miles? Answer, 167,376 feet. So, 167,376 feet of vertical drop must be negotiated over 500 miles on this sphere Earth. Number one, real world. I'm traveling by commercial plane from Pittsburgh, PA to Atlanta, Georgia for the Super Bowl. Approximate distance, 500 miles. Two, the typical cruising speed is 500 miles an hour. 500 miles distance at 500 miles per hour equals a travel time of one hour. So, question. How many feet of vertical drop per minute on average needs to be negotiated on my trip? Total feet vertical drop over 500 miles equals, remember, 167,376 feet. Travel time is one hour. It's a simple calculation. 167,376 feet divided by 60 minutes. The answer, 2,789.6 feet vertical drop per minute average must be negotiated by the plane on my trip. Does this happen? No. The sphere is a stone cold fairy tale. There's no way around it. It's just that simple. Let's try another scenario. How many miles of vertical drop geometric must be negotiated over a distance of 1,000 miles this time on a ball with a circumference of 25,000 miles? Answer, 128.3 miles. How many feet are in 128.3 miles? Answer, 677,424 feet. So... 677,424 feet of vertical drop must be negotiated over a thousand miles on the spherical Earth. Fairy tale. Real world. I'm traveling by commercial plane from Pittsburgh, PA to Dallas, Texas. Approximate distance 1,000 miles. Typical cruising speed 500 miles an hour. So 1,000 mile distance at 500 miles per hour equals a travel time of 2 hours or 120 minutes. So, question. How many feet of vertical drop per minute on average needs to be negotiated on my trip? Total feet vertical drop over 1,000 miles is 677,424 feet. The travel time is 2 hours. Simple calculation again. 677,424 feet divided by 120 minutes. Answer. 5,645 feet vertical drop over a mile per minute average must be negotiated by the plane on my trip. <laughs> Alice in Wonderland is more tenable than the Baltard spinning space monkey religion. The prosecution rests Simple. You live in a fairy tale? The end. Comments, questions? No, it's pretty simple. We, this is a, a fairly simple math thought problem that we used to do like in grade school or junior high, and the numbers don't lie. If, if we assume they're starting assumptions, because a lot of times we have to say that because a lot of times people will think that this is the argument we're making when we're not, is that if we take their assumptions of radius and diameter, and then there's no escaping the conclusion that, yeah, you unless you fly at a tangent, which is like laying a ruler on top of a ball that, and flying along the ruler, your altitude above the ball is going to get higher and higher unless you compensate, like you were just saying. And that's, that's all it is. People think that they can predefine level as parallel to the surface of a ball by 
assuming that there's a ball in the first place. So circular reasoning, begging the question, um, and they don't think about the fact that they don't see in the real world example that you used of a plane of flight that this is not what anybody does. Precisely. All right, before we move on to Arwen, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or rebuttals to this proof, the Discord Ballbusters chat link is in the info box below. Go ahead and join the, Dis the Ballbusters Discord chat right now, and we'll get to uh, the questions, comments, or rebuttals right after this little round robin right here. Okay? Thanks. Arwen, any thoughts? Right. So, well, basically no criticism whatsoever. You explained it very carefully, very concisely, very to the point, as usual. And yeah, it's such a, you know, straight kick into the goal here, the black swan situation, as I explained earlier. And I'm pretty surprised that there's now 145 watching, according to my YouTube page. Yet only 39 upvotes? What is this? Smash that upvote right now. <laughs> Are you like my cheerleader? I thought for sure, I, I was listening to you, you said, this is a straight kick into, I thought you were going to go some other direction. Forgive me. My mind's in the gutter. I'm a worm. <laughs> yeah, the ballers rub off onto us, unfortunately. Chocolate, thoughts? Yeah, this one is pretty. It's pretty just straightforward. Uh, I mean, I've flown from New York to California many times and back, and it's never like you said. We would definitely feel it if we had to negotiate all that drop, and uh, we don't. Nobody ever does. That's just ridiculous. We fly straight, level all the way there. <laughs> I mean, it's just so simple. And if you think that that's what planes are doing in reality and negotiating, uh, uh, descending over a curve consistently, then you, I don't know, you're maybe slightly delusional. Maybe you should get in a plane and try to actually experience what you're experiencing, not putting yourself in some type of fantasy land. Or like John said, it's fairy tale. I like that. <laughs> Tenth. Yeah, uh, my experience is just like chocolate. I know what the takeoff feels like until they get to altitude. I know what descending for landing feels like, but everything in between is level. I've never felt them adjust. It's getting harder and harder for me to see who's in there, Matt. Um, thanks, Ted. Um, is that you, Nathan? I can go next if you want. Go ahead, sir. If the Earth's a sphere and it's alleged to have drop, then the plane you're in has got a drop around that sphere it's claimed to be. And surprisingly, the amount of drop that you actually experience is the same amount of drop they publish on Google Earth. And that'd be none. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. And if you could tell when I was first reading that statement out, remember when I first presented these flat earth proofs and I said that these were not scientific, they were logical consistency proofs. If you can remember way back, I think I said it every single time that I presented these. You know what? I could put each one of these that we're going to do, we're going to do flight, we're going to do the Solar. We're going to do the ESSM Block 1, the Evolved Sea Sparrow, the Coriolis Effect, and Gas Pressure. You know what I could do? I can weaponize each and every single one into a Modus Tollens. You guys know that? Wow, what a, what a weird coincidence. That's right. such a weird coincidence. Um, Sleeping Warrior and myself had exactly that conversation earlier today. Really? It started off with, yeah, Tony went... You know, I could formulate all of our arguments into modus tollens. I was like, yeah, that's because they're all logically consistent. He was like, but well, why couldn't you just do that with some of the globe arguments? I'm like, because they're not logically consistent. That's why we <laughs> end up with logical fallacies. 
<laughs> but yeah, absolutely correct. And I said exactly that. So did Tony. What great minds think alike. Precisely, all of the arguments that we put up on housekeeping could be turned into Modus Tolan's logical consistencies. They're all bulletproof. I haven't looked at all of the... I, I'm just talking about the ones I have. I haven't looked at the other ones, but that's what I meant when I said logical consistency. And you said you talked to Tony. Where is that, Burke? He's currently formulating the housekeeping questions into logical consistencies, I think. <laughs> he better be. Betty. Comments, questions? No, nothing to add. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> Jose Mesa. Nothing to add, sir. Everything everybody has said has been very concise. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Righteous, you out there? Yes. We're going to go ahead and open it up. I, I can't see everyone in the Discord. Uh, my, my vision's limited on, on the screen here. Uh, if there's anyone that, that you can see that's entered comments, questions, we're just going to deal, not with the Black Swan, we're just going to deal with this flight proof. If you can go ahead and take those ones off mute. One at a time, please. Who is doing that? Am I? <laughs> No, it's going to be righteous. Oh, okay. Okay. Tell us. All right, you, I'm not seeing. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, just tell us if there's anyone. If there's no one, that's fine. Uh, but if there is, you know, state their name, and I'm going to make sure they know the rules. So, is there anyone in there? Well, there's Sean Hawkins, but he's only in text chat. Let me yeah. see if I can get him in. Only, only in voice in Ballbuster's voice. Don't go chasing him in text. Okay. So there's nobody from. Well, there's flat earthers. No ballers that are coming up. So what did they quit? There is a uh, one guy in chat. Um, Blue Marble Science says your calculations are wrong. So <laughs> hillbilly just blue to, balls, the redneck a... retard, sir. These are basic, simple, third-grade calculations. None of them are wrong, right? Now, go back and make a video about how you can prove gas pressure without a container and bring a couple containers with you, okay? Clown. Unbelievable. Uh, also, Why don't you... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Nathan. I was just going to say, also, uh, a pipe is a container. Just FYI. How about the clean slate? Yeah, I know. I just remembered that. Sorry. But he isn't in Vol Ballbusters voice chat, is he? It doesn't matter. It's clean slate. It is clean slate. Well, he's. I said everyone. Let me just say it again. Everyone entering the Ballbusters Discord voice chat is clean slated. That means any bad history between guests and panel members will be put aside and not spoken of. That's clear. So yeah, it, he's never come in here. Uh, but let it be clear, though, that if fallacies are going to be made right at the start, that's immediately going to, yeah, screw up the clean slate, of course. Well, no, <laughs> it'll keep the clean slate. We'll just have to stop. And then, like I said, each point has to be supported. It can't, yeah, right. It can't be fallacious. All right, righteous. Right. You're telling me that there's no one else in here? No. Okay, thank you, sir. So, ballers, I just gave, you... say again. It's, it's Paul. I can play baller for a second. No, nah, I don't want you, you to want play. To. I don't want you to play baller. Nope, okay. I don't want you to do that. We don't want your balls. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. I think an orthodox wants to join. I hope the gap's in the panel. Feel free, an orthodox, if you want to come on and show us where QE's calculations are wrong. You're very welcome. Why weren't you in here already? I announced it beforehand. Why do we have to hold up the show? Is what I'm saying. All right. Do, 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 do. Come on, Pete. Are we adults? That question was. Keeping wasn't... up with this. 
The question He's wasn't keeping rhetorical. up with his namesake. Go ahead, 10th. I said he's keeping up with his namesake. He's unorthodox. It can take him a while. You should already I think we be... should move on. Say again? I think we should move on. He's yeah. making some excuse in chat, so... Yeah, we're going to move on. So... This is Back what we all been... <laughs> <laughs> this is Pack Swan scares the ball away. This is what we've all been waiting for anyway. We might as well just get to it. So, so uh, ballers, right? I'm gonna start the number one ball killer, the Black Swan. I'm gonna start right now. It's gonna take me a little while to get through to the end. So you got about, I would say, roughly 20 minutes to click the link in the info box that says Ball Busters Voice Chat. And come into the room. You'll be on mute. We'll get to you. Okay? So, let's begin. The foundation, the sole foundation of the black swan argument is the horizon. It's just as simple as that. I've got four definitions here. I've got ten of them. I just pulled four out. Here we go. Horizon. We got it from Wiki. Merriam-Webster, Oxford, and National Geographic. I'm going to get to this one after these. This is going to be pretty funny. Horizon, the apparent line that separates the Earth from sky. Horizon, the line where the Earth seems to meet the sky. The apparent junction of Earth and sky sailing toward the horizon. Horizon, the line at which the Earth's surface and sky, and the sky, appear to meet, right? From National Geographic, listen up to everyone that's been saying uh, for the past, I think it's been three days now I've heard this, that we have two horizons. The apparent horizon, the one we see, and the geometric horizon, we can't see that one. Listen closely. National Geographic. The local horizon, also called the geometrical horizon is the visible boundary between the earth and the sky. Let me say it again. The local horizon, also called the geometrical horizon, is the visible boundary between the earth and the sky. You get it? I know you don't. I, later on today, I'm going to be hearing two or three or four horizons. With the geometric horizon non visible. Guarantee it. Why are they talking about it appears, it seems, it's apparent? I.e., not actually. Well, number one is well, duh, right? Because the Earth never actually meets the sky. Now, does it? That's one reason why it's apparent. The geometric horizon is also apparent because it's variable with the observer's height, making it variable. You get that. What can obstruct, obfuscate, or obscure the geometric horizon, you may ask? Weather, atmospheric conditions, waves, tides, etc. The horizon, this is a key point. Listen closely. The horizon can never be more than, when I say horizon, I'm saying geometric horizon, okay? Let me start over. The geometric horizon can never be more than, more than, never be more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. It can be closer then 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet due to weather, atmospheric conditions, waves, and tides. Do you follow this? You don't. I know you don't. However, on a Baltard ball, the geometric horizon, again, can be no more than what its geometric constraints allow. It's based on the observer's height and radius. 
a.k.a. a parent. From Andrew Thomas Young, San Diego State University, Astronomy Department. If H is in meters, that makes the distance to the geometric horizon 3.57 kilometers times the square root of the height of the eye in meters, or about 1.23 miles times the square root of the eye height in feet. Any questions? This is pretty cut and dry. Obviously not. But here again. Thank you. It, <laughs> yeah, I could stop there, right? No, go ahead, go ahead. But let's, you know what? That's a good stop, Paula, because this is a very important point before we move on to the argument. Questions, comments, Paula, go. Well, I was just going to say that this is what we said at the start with the fact that their own curve calculator with their presupposed radius of the Earth and physical obstruction based on the radius of the Earth this is their model, their insistence for five years that they come up with these calculations, even no matter how involved the calculations are for server height, et cetera, and the height of the object you're trying to view. The point is that they themselves set the limitation of how far you can see. That's why they're trying to do that is because boats go over the horizon. So it's hidden by something physical has been their argument for five years. Thanks. Arwen? Yeah, I can only uh, add, add to that. Just There's nowhere left to go. They can, they can try to double think their way out of this in order to perceive some kind of victory by showing us how they master our argument, right? But in the end, yeah, they're still left without their original conditioning argument and how they're going to proceed from this point on it, yeah it's, it's going to be a lot of double think from now on they're doubling down arwen yep double down syndrome <laughs> chocolate yeah i don't really have anything to add i mean it's all it's all there they're denying their own arguments they've had to bob and weave and flip and bounce and do all these things to dance around the main argument is that they don't have a geometric horizon. So, I mean, it's, it's just telling and people are paying attention, guys. It's not like your Jedi mind trick is going to work because it's not. So, welcome to Flat Earth, guys. I say again, from National Geographic, the local horizon, also called the geometric horizon, is the visible boundary between the Earth and the sky. Tenth. Uh, well, they're going to be in big trouble if they're going to go and change how geometry works. And it looks like that's the road they deciding to go. Nathan, sir. Well, their concession or defense, depending on how you want to phrase it, is our victory. So their model's geometric. It has a geometric horizon. And any of the refraction values that they're going to extrapolate out start with the geometry and the geometric horizon. As I said earlier, it's marked on the Metabunk site with a nice X and the word horizon. As soon as they argue it's not where it's supposed to be because of a refractive effect, then it's no longer the geometric horizon. However, by definition, from obviously sphere biased sources like Nat Geo, they're, they're going to describe it as it is in the model. Their globe model requires a physical geometric horizon. They don't have it anymore. It's game over. This is checkmate. Betty. No, nothing to add. It's and just perspective, and it's just easy to see, but I think that people are you know, indoctrinated so much so that we need a major intervention. Hopefully this show will do that for them, but there's too many people out there. 
Has any other ball busters uh, snuck into the chat? Ball busters? No. Oh, yeah. What's... Yeah, Anthony's here. Tony! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I was listening. I, c I can't stop on long, but I do have one little point to make. Go ahead, sir. Um, this th this oil platforms um, video or photograph or whatever you want to call it, it can be argued two ways. There's a stronger way to do it, and there's a weaker way to do it. Pick the strong way to do it because it's the strongest. Don't go with the weaker one. The weaker way is to argue it as a flat earth proof. The reason why it's weaker is because you're not able to apply the modus tollens argument to it. If you argue it as a, as a globe earth killer, you get the modus tollens application, and it's that that makes it strong. So if you, you, you have the choice, don't make the wrong choice. Don't argue it as a flat earth proof, even though, there's, even though there is, like, low, it's a really strong flat earth proof. Um, <clears throat> Bob and uh, Taboo Conspiracy 2 are quite right to say that in that angle, or from that perspective, it is a white swan. So don't argue it as a flat earth proof. Argue it as a ball earth killer because you can apply modus tollens and they can't get past modus tollens. So it's much stronger to attack them with modus tollens than it is to argue it as a flat earth proof. I'm done. Well, thanks, thanks. for the professional. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. Is that it for you? You gonna you gonna take off? Uh, I'll stop for a few more minutes just to just to like see what if 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 I can. But I, I'm in the middle of doing something, so I can't I can't stop. Okay, all right, thank you, sir. Okay, can I have him while I've, while we've got his attention? Yes. You know we were talking about um, not necessarily all of the housekeeping questions, but you brought it up, Anthony. You said all of these arguments we have to be formulated into modus tollens. Well, QE just literally said that live on air. I could formulate all of these and weaponize all of the arguments I use as flat earth proofs. And literally, you and I had that conversation only today. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah, and we were doing it from the critical point, which was if we did that to the housekeeping points, then it would take away from this oil platforms point right now, because at the moment, we're trying to get everyone on our side to understand it from our perspective, right? And if we can get people on our side to understand it from our perspective and argue it the way we're saying argue it, then th th we become an army. If we argue it the other way, which is as a flat earth proof, it just becomes a flat earth proof according to Nathan or according to me or according to the person that's arguing it. And there's nothing behind it. So <laughs> stick it to a, a ball earth killer, apply modus tollens to it and we win. And when we think that people have got their heads around it enough and there are, and we see people arguing it in, in debates on other channels and whatnot, and they're getting it right, then we'll apply it to all the other ho housekeeping points. And then we've got a, a boatload of modus tollens arguments that we can use time and time again because they can't get past the logic. But if we argue it as a flat earth proof, then they can get past it if they say, it's only because Mitch from, Mitchell from Australia said it, but they can't do that when it's modus tollens. So just let's get it all, let's get everyone singing on the same song sheet for the minute. We're all singing the same song. And once we realize that our side get it and it's being used properly, then we'll do it to all, all the other proofs. And then it, they can't get past the logic. So it's, it's so powerful that they're dead and it removes the person that's presenting the argument out of it so it's no longer a, an, in the opinion of Nathan Oakley no 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 modus tollens bitches and the cat it's just so powerful <laughs> solidarity Anthony's <laughs> preaching solidarity nice. I love it anything else Black Swan. Black Swan. all right let's get on with it the death of the baltard spinning space monkey religion. Again. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height and feet. That's the geometric horizon. See all the curve calculators because that's the formula they're using, folks. Now. I don't care about these oil platforms other than to say they are used to demarcate distance. That's it. Platform Habitat and Platform Hill House. I don't care if there's a Chinese Superman riding a pink 
hobbled unicorn with the tutu on that's being refracted off the cranes or any other part of either of these platforms. It is not the argument. The argument is this line behind the platforms called the horizon. That is the argument. Anything else, the oil platforms, the water, the color of the water, the boat that the ballers think this is, <laughs> I don't care. It is red herring fallacy to the argument. The argument is the horizon behind the platforms, especially behind the 9.41 miles. The observer's height in this picture right here was one foot. You'll see that in the black swan photo, I gave them five feet, right? Just so there wouldn't be any arguments over that and we can move on. It doesn't matter anyway. However, it actually was one foot. If you watch the original video, it's pretty clear. The distance to the horizon is greater than 9.41 miles. Everyone could see it. This is 9.41 miles from the observer. The horizon is greater than 9.41 miles. There, It is behind it. Even a five-foot observer height like I used in the black swan photo below, we'll see it here in a second, even at five feet, the maximum distance to the geometric horizon is 2.73 miles. So it's not precise, but it should be way up here. Being that this is 6.21 miles. But I'm just guessing, but it should be way up here. Even if you were standing 35 feet, <laughs> which is ridiculous, observer's height, distance at the shore, the maximum distance to the geometric horizon is 7.24 miles. So if you were standing here at 35 feet, the, the, the horizon should be between Platform Hill House at 6.21 miles and Platform Habitat at 9.41 miles. It would be at 7.23 miles. This is pretty easy to understand. There'd be no problems with this. The actual argument. Flat earthers. When you challenge others, mainly ballers, with this argument, you have to, you, you must get them to repeat the actual argument that's brought against them. That way, they're not going to be able to divert away around to anything else because this is pretty clear. Modus Tollens, holy shnikes, this is going to leave a mark. If P, then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, P, then every horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, Q. Not Q, because we have a horizon distance greater than 9.41 miles, therefore not P, i.e. the Earth is not a sphere. The ball tart spinning space monkey community, please allow me to introduce to you your black plague, the black swan. There it is. Bye bye, ball. Questions, comments? It, that isn't pronounced boo bye, ball. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but yeah. And, and there's still people in the chat going, oh, but wait a minute, your definition that said, that, and then they twist it completely the opposite of what she said, that it is an apparent horizon and this and that. But the point again is that if boats go over the horizon or oil rigs go over the horizon be, and disappear bottom up, it's because of physical obstruction, then they can't have their ball. That That's you know, their own stipulation, applying logic to their own argument and their maximum distance to the horizon. And that they've tried to give up now. And now there's, but there's still, they're divided on this now because there's still people in the chat going, uh, you know, just saying the opposite of that. They, there's some of them are saying, yes, it is a physical thing. Some of them are saying it's not. Some of them are flip flopping, like you've already mentioned before. 
And it's just crazy. And it's all because they must find a way out of this predicament and they can't because it's logically airtight, it's observationally airtight because we have, the, the, the nice thing about this picture is that those platforms aren't moving and their, their location is very precise and the uh, horizon line is obviously beyond, therefore the horizon is not hiding them as has been their claim that it must all these years and suddenly they can't do it now. So that's just sheer desperation to the point of either misnaming the argument, the modus tollens, as if the premise is has two premises in it and some such things like that. It's just sheer desperation. I don't know what else to call it. Checkmate. Weakness is just pain leaving the body. Arwen. Yeah, it's all about getting over. You know, that's what it's always been about. And for some people, it just takes a very, very, very long time. And they have all this intelligence available to them. And then, well, their denial basically utilizes their intelligence to, yeah, fend off the possibility that they were wrong, basically. That's, that's what it's all about. And, yeah, that, that's what's mostly what the ballers we know and <laughs> love or loathe and despise depends on the moment that's what they're all about thank you tony thanks very much for that tony chocolate <laughs> um I'll say that I, I agree with what Riley said before, um, talking about the application of the modus tollens to the argument and not just, you know, showing the picture, but applying the logic to it is what makes it, it is basically the weaponization of that, of that observation. That's what makes it so strong is the application of this modus tollens to it. Right, because they have definite math. Right, we have a radius that can't be changed, and <laughs> sometimes I think they forget that if we live on a ball, there is a certain limit, and that's what we're saying. Like, yeah, you could have a horizon uh, shorter in shorter distance, but you have a limit, and that limit is far exceeded in this observation. I don't know how much more simply it can be put to you guys. And this limit makes it so that this ball just cannot exist if it has a radius of 3,959 miles. I mean, it's the simplest breakdown of this argument. And therefore, it can't be a ball with a radius of that number. It's just, it's just not possible. So, yeah, it, it's... It's applying this argument to this observation that destroys it. And yeah, it's a globe killer. So, yeah. Shit. Reminder, this isn't, this photo isn't an anomaly. You can't have a geometric anomaly. That's an oxymoron. A contradiction in terms. That was one of their latest fiascos. Tenth. Yeah, just piggybacking on what Chocolate said. Uh, for the ballers, they must have a geometric horizon because of the math tied to the radius. For a long time now, they've been saying that the boats and buildings are disappearing because of Earth curve. Well, geometry, now they're going to have to go back if they change and say it's all, always been apparent. So now they're going to bring back perspective, which has been our argument. So like Nathan and you have said, there's no way around this. The geometry must work if you're on a sphere with a radius of 3959, and it does not. Thanks, Betty. <clears throat> yeah, nothing much, much to add. I think that things have been said already. I got a super chat for you that someone super chatted like 
it was Eagle playing an anchor, and he posted a, a sticker and says knockout. So <laughs> it's a knockout for the ball. Appreciate that, sir. You got it right. Keep on pushing on, Nathan, sir. I like I like the chess analogy best with the black swan because I don't know if you guys play chess or not, but you, you slowly move your positions, and all of the pieces that are on the board are the same pieces we've always had. But they've just been positioned differently. And now, by using it, I go off the back of what Anthony said, as a, a globe killer rather than a flat earth proof, the, when it's on a chessboard, the flat earth proof would just be putting them in check. And they just move one, one uh, movement with their king, and they're out of check. Well, this is checkmate, as in they move left and say it's looming, the horizon that is. Well, then it's not geometric, game over. They say, well, it is still the physical edge of my sphere. Yes, absolutely. The model's right. We've got a geometric edge. Well, then the ball's much, much bigger in this picture. Game over. You've lost. So there's several pieces around this geometric horizon. And I think that the thing that I'm slowly starting to realize they don't appreciate is that when you say the word geometric, it doesn't suddenly mean that you can infer some sort of optical effect to the geometric effect. The geometry is the physicality. And that's what they're claiming. Earth is a physical sphere with its physical geometry. So when they start arguing about these optical effects, it's like, well, no, no, you can't do that. You, when you say it's an oxymoron, what was the example of the oxymoron again? Uh, a geometric, geometric anomaly? <laughs> a geometric anomaly. Right, so what you've got is they're saying the physicality's got an abnormal day. <laughs> it's like saying someone stuck a pump in the earth today and <laughs> pumped it up. It'll deflate tomorrow. It's just an anomaly. No, your physicality, the geometry and its singular horizon are fixed and the tenets of your religion. So if you start deviating away from geometry into optics, then you're no longer talking about geometry and you've lost because our point is the horizon isn't geometric. So arguing it for it not being geometric with some optical phenomena that you'll extract from the geometry anyway isn't giving you what you need to solve this problem, which is a physical edge to a sphere. Basically, the tense of your religion. The thing you've been arguing about for us, with us for four or five years, you know, relinquishing it is, is your loss and our win. So, it, like I say, it's checkmate as opposed to using it and just saying, look, you can see much further. Clearly, the Earth looks and presents itself as it is, flat in this image. Well, they only move one step left and say, ah, refraction. But as soon as you say, no, 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 the geometric model that you have and its physicality says the horizon can't be beyond this point. That's physically impossible. Well, no, but optically it's possible. Well, no, 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 Ge geometrically, mate, the physicality of the ball you think we're on, that's got its limits. They're nothing to do with the optics, purely down to its physicality. As soon as you start diddling with it, you've lost because you're relinquishing the very heart and soul of your religious belief in a globe Earth. When you relinquish the geometry of it, that's the base. That's what it is, a geometric model of Earth, which we don't live on. We don't have a geometric horizon. Game over. Checkmate. Beautiful. Tony, last call. Potential debunks. Oh, I thought I heard somebody. Tony, is that you? Yeah, yeah, last call. Um, just want to reiterate my point again. Um, don't argue it as a flat earth proof. It's the weaker position. Argue it as a ball earth kill. Um, and apply modus tollens because it removes the personality out of it. And they can't, they can't defeat the logic behind it. And the evidence is incontrovertible. incontrovertible. It proves that the horizon is miles away and it's miles out. So don't argue it as a flat earth proof. Take the stronger, the, the better position, the strong position, and win. I'm done. Can you just tape that audio and put it in the side chat? And then whenever, you can leave, and then we'll just hit that whenever we say Tony. <laughs> sure, I just want it, it, to, it's just worth pointing out the difference between the two positions like many times. Because if we see people arguing it the better way, then we win because we become, we become united on it and it removes personality from it always. So it doesn't become quantum erasers black swan anymore. It becomes modus tollens. Beat that, bitches. 
But can I just add something to that? Which sure. is, there is a stronger way to argue it, which is to argue it as a globe killer rather than the earth proof. That's the stronger position. I just wanted to add that because I don't think Tony made that clear. I yeah. did. That was exactly what I said. Yes, and that's what I titled it right from the beginning. So we're on the same sheet. Yes. All right, potential debunks. We already went over uh, the first one initially that BMLS B69 isn't one foot. I'm not going to play the video. You could, The original video is in the info box below. You can go ahead and review it or see the collector's edition. He is clearly right around one foot, give or take a few. Number two, there is land or islands behind the platforms. Again, see the ball buster or the glow buster, glow busters, see the globe killer collector's edition. I go over the land issue, both in the video and on Google Earth. Number three, you can't see the horizon. Uh, you have some serious eye issues. I would suggest an ophthalmologist appointment ASAP. Number four, white swans. This is also taken from BMLS B69, and it was taken 19 December 2016, while the uh, black swan was taken in October, so just a com couple months later. Doesn't really matter. It's, it's not a big deal. It has nothing to do with my argument. Please see my argument. And then take a look at this picture and then provide your argument and you'll see that it's non sequitur. I don't really care what's going on here. The sea was angry that day, my friends. Right? I don't really care. It has nothing to do with my argument. If I may for a second intervene for just a few Go ahead. seconds. I think that in that photo, uh, it seems like the refraction in the overall air was uh, significantly increased. Because the gray soup, the backdrop layer, seems to be apparently much closer by. And uh, yeah, there's more concealed behind the apparent horizon, which seems a lot closer by. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, there is a lot of shenanigans going on here. Uh, more even, how about the ones we don't know? I mean, just let alone the ones that we do, the ones we don't know. Well, there's obviously atmospheric effects here. The waves... Uh, the tide, there's there are obvious things, but what I'm the point is, it has nothing to do with my argument, is what I'm trying Indeed. to state. Yeah, there may be some shoaling going on. Sure, sure. Now, I was taking a closer look. I went through this presentation just to make sure everything was formatted, everything was good to go last night, and I I took a look at at this picture a, a little closer. And do you know that this is a black swan? Now, I can't be precise, right? Because I, I, don't, I just can't do it. I don't have any markers here to tell me what the distance is. Now, BMLSB was at the same position. However, he, he was standing up when he took this shot. It was on a different day. I think it was a few days later, if I'm not mistaken, from the original black swan. But... It just generally speaking, remember at five feet, the horizon should be at 2.73 miles. This is platform Hill house over here. Now this is at 6.21 miles, the closer platform. Where's the horizon in this picture? It's pretty close to the base of that platform, isn't it? At six, 6.21 miles. This is black swan. Generally speaking, like I said, I don't have any markers except for this. I can tell that this is pretty close. If you look down here at the pillars, look down here at the pillars and compare them to the pillars here. It's pretty close. So now I'm going with this is just, this is another black swan. Uh, but I digress. Like it just caught my eye last night. Uh, moreover, does this observation debunk the number one globe killer? No. Remember, if the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, then every horizon distance measurement must be no more than, very key statement, must be no more than 
1.225 times the square root of the, of the observer's height in feet. That's the geometric horizon. It's very important that they restate the argument against them. I keep on stressing that. That's for a reason. Mainly for the must be no more than part. Atmospheric refraction. Like gravity. That's all they can do, right? We've heard this over the past two weeks. What we've gathered over the past two weeks is what we've already known. They do not know what atmospheric refraction is. They, they're from MSU. Making stuff up. Let's get out of it. Let's see what it is. Let's get specific in detail. From their alma mater wiki. Atmospheric refraction near the ground produces mirages. Such refraction can also raise or lower or stretch or shorten the images of distant objects without involving mirages. How many types, how many effects are there of atmospheric refraction? Let's count them. Ready? We'll go by the numbers. One... Two, three, four, five. Five. Let's see if we can't get some more cowbell with that. Let's go to Wiki again. However, they've parroted our good buddy, Andrew Thomas Young from San Diego State University. While mirages are the best known atmospheric refraction phenomena, looming and similar refraction phenomena do not produce mirages. Mirages show an extra image or images of the mirage object, while looming, towering, stooping, sinking do not. No inverted image is present in those phenomena either. Depending on the atmospheric conditions, the objects can appear to be elevated or lowered, stretched or stooped. These phenomena can occur together, changing the appearance of different parts of the objects in different ways. Sometimes these phenomena can occur together with a true mirage. Let's count them again. One, mirages. Two, looming. Three, towering. Four, stooping. Five, sinking. One, two, three, four, five. They are five types or five effects of refraction. So, what are we going to do? If somebody says, well, for the black swan, my response, one word, refraction, which is silly anyway. Why don't you give us an explanation, right? Not just that we don't need one word. For goodness sakes. What are we going to do with this, right? When they say refraction, well, we're going to take a look at each of those five effects of refraction. We're going to define them specifically, and then we're going to apply them to the context of the black swan photo, right? You see how that logically follows? Rhetorical question right there. So let's do it. So again, there are five effects of refraction. So is the horizon miraged? Well, let's take a look what the mirage definition is. Mirages show an extra image or images of the mirage object. Is there an extra horizon in the black swan photo? Is there an extra horizon in this photo? Obviously not. So, one down. We'll take two and three together. So is the horizon towering or stooping? Let's define them. Towering and stooping change the apparent shape of the object itself. With towering, objects appear stretched with stooping, objects seem to be shortened. Is the horizon stretched or shortened in the black swan photo? Is the horizon stretched or shortened in this photo? Obviously, that's a non sequitur fallacy. So, three down, two to go. Sinking. From William Humphrey's Physics of the Air, sinking is the opposite of looming. In sinking, stationary objects that are normally seen above the horizon 
appear to be lowered or may even disappear below the horizon. In looming, the curvature of the rays is increasing while sinking produces the opposite effect. We're going to get to these silly rays here in a few. The question, is the horizon lowered or disappeared below the horizon in the black swan photo? Is the horizon lowered or disappeared in this photo? Non, no. non sequitur fallacy again. Nope. Last one. Because this is this is the coup de gras. Because this is what they have to say, not knowing what this term means. Now, they not only know it, it is misdefined by the experts. And I'm going to show that here in a few minutes. But we're just going to use their definition. Even within the constraints of the definition, they're wrong. Of their own definition. From their alma mater wiki, looming is the most noticeable and most often observed of these refraction phenomena. It is an abnormally large refraction of the object that increases the apparent elevation of the distant objects and sometimes allows an observer to see objects that are located below the horizon under normal conditions. Let's get our good buddy, Andrew Thomas Young from San Diego State University, the subject matter expert, to state what looming is. Looming, the appearance above the horizon of a distant object that would normally be hidden below it. Now we're going to hold off on the second part of the definition and we'll get to that below. All we need is the top definition right here. Is the horizon appearing above the horizon in the black swan photo? Is the horizon appearing above the horizon in this photo? No. Non sequitur fallacy from the Black Lagoon. They don't know what looming is. That's five out of five. You are out, ballers. Your ball is dead. You don't even know what the five effects of refraction are. Atmospheric refraction, right? You don't know them. You don't know what atmospheric refraction is, period. You just, gah, refraction. You don't know what it means. It's clear and obvious. By the way, the frigging horizon doesn't ever loom. Ever, ever, ever. Not even in your own definition, it doesn't. Now we're going to take the second part of this definition and take it to the woodshed and bludgeon it senseless. This effect is caught. This effect looming is caused by unusually large terrestrial refraction. We could just stop right there, right? Terrestrial refraction. What? What's that? Mike discipline. Terrestrial refraction. This is a stone cold begging the question fallacy. I'll show you. Does light refract? Yeah. Is that the same that can be accounted for by terrestrial refraction? Answer? Nope. Keyword terrestrial. You see, terrestrial refraction already assumes a sphere. That is, the calculations already assume the radius of the Earth. That is, curvature. Again, from our good buddy, the subject matter expert, Andrew Thomas Young, San Diego State University. The atmosphere is also curved as it follows the shape of the Earth. In the calculations below, we'll adopt the rough value of 6,400 kilometers as the radius of curvature to make the calculation simple. Kaboom! You see this, professor? You're assuming the premise, atmosphere is curved, which is a tear-jerking belly laugher. Gas is curving. Yeah. Then by proxy, Earth curvature, to prove the conclusion true, that being terrestrial refraction, then looming. That's a textbook begging the question fallacy, circular banjo, do -si do Right? Now, their looming appeal is a train wreck. I'm going to show that their looming definition is even wrong. Right now. Again, looming from Andrew Thomas Young. The appearance above the horizon of a distant object that would normally be hidden below it. Right? That's not looming, friends. Looming 
from Quantum Eraser, Andrew Thomas Young's Huckleberry, Loaming is nothing more than an optical illusion produced by the sky being inferior mirage underneath an object, giving the appearance of said objects floating above a false horizon. Which one you think is correct? Let me show you something. This is the quintessential example of looming. This is it. Now, I told you there's a trick using off-center vision that you can see the actual horizon in this photo. What's going on here? Well, the sky up here is being inferior miraged back underneath this boat, giving a false horizon and making this look like, like it's floating. It's as simple as that. Let's use McWest. Whenever we're in trouble, we can always you know, count on Miss McWest to save us. He did an exposition on this very photo. Why? Well, because the press was calling it a Fata Morgana. Mick was correct in correcting them because this is not a mirage. This is not a mirage. It's clear. We know the definition of mirage, and we know the definition of a Fata Morgana, and there's no inversion here, so Mick was correct. Not a mirage. His second one was the real horizon is here, or near here. Yeah, because we can see it using off-center vision right here. But Mick used contrast to make it a little clearer for everyone. His false horizon is here. He's correct. His reason is a train wreck. Because Mick said this is due to a fog bank. But as we, as anyone can see or can think of, if this was a fog bank, then you couldn't see the boat. Mick. Bubby. So, oh, which definition is correct? Right? Mine. 2014 at the Scottish Open. Don't look over here to the right just yet. Don't worry about this. Just look to the left. Right? You don't even need to see or use off-center vision. We can see the horizon. I can see it plainly. It's clear. Right? If you look at the right-hand photo, this is where they color corrected. What's happening here? The sky is being inferior miraged underneath the boat. It, it's giving a false horizon and it's making the boat appear like it's floating. Whose definition is correct? For looming. Andrew Thomas Young or his Huckleberry Quantum Eraser? Yeah, I know. Last example. Raptured boats. In this photo, again, you don't need to, to use off-center vision. I can see it clearly right there. Right? What's happening is this sky is being inferior mirage beneath these boats. Now, this, would, this inferior mirage is subject to change based on the, your angle of incident, the light's angle of incidence and the angle of incidence to your eye. If you raise an elevation, this will move. Right? Now, the definition, remember, is the sky being inferior miraged underneath an object or objects, creating a false horizon right here and makes it appear that the boats are floating. You, we, this horizon right here, you could tell it's all fragmented, right? You know, this, this is false. And you can see the actual horizon right here. Whose definition is correct? Andrew Thomas Young or his Huckleberry Quantum Eraser? The prosecution rests with atmospheric refraction or looming. Questions, comments? Well, to borrow a movie line from <clears throat> a movie about sailors and pirates, and reason's got nothing to do with it. That's the problem. They'll just keep parroting refraction, begging the question with it matches our calculations of a presupposed curve. So, therefore, you're wrong because math and because presupposition. And if they thought about it at all, which you've done for them, um, they would not even try such a lame argument, but they do. And I, you know, we get called liars in the chat here today just because we're saying that, that this has been 
their argument for five years about the physical obstruction of curvature, and to call them out for that is July now. So that that's the ad hom that it sticks to because they cannot refute the logic, they can't refute the observation, and you picked it apart one by one by one. So what can they do but hurl abuse? That, that's all that's left to them. Thanks, Paula. Arwen. Yeah, nothing much to add, really. No. It's just smooth sailing for the, well, the Flat Earth com community from this point on, pretty much. And yeah, it's up to everyone uh, what they do with this. We we got them by the balls. We got them by the foundation. And yeah, it's just going to be a, a lot of clowning around and uh, crayon munching, as you like to call it. So yeah. Thanks, Arwen. Tony, should we treat this as a ball killer rather than a flat earth proof? I think it's very important like to treat this as a globe killer like rather than a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that Cho was good chocolate that was good chocolate go ahead uh i mean yeah it's just it's a wrap man <laughs> i don't i don't know much else to say i mean go ahead keep keep denying what you guys argued for years and years like i mean even now today you're still you some of you will argue it's physical some of you won't i mean it's just evident that you're flailing you know you're scrambling the jets right now and i, and I get it because your whole world paradigm is coming down <laughs> and it's coming down on your heads and it's it's obvious when like one of the best of you Mr. Rumpus will come in and completely deny that he's argued it's it's physical. I mean, when he's done it with us, <laughs> I mean, Brenda will come in and, and and say that the horizon's not there, or I don't, I just don't recognize this as even evidence. Like, I mean, come on, there's got to be somebody better that's going to come along and actually give a, a good argument. But I mean, it's not going to happen. I think we need to shout, shout out to Sammy. Hold, hold, hold the phone for Betty. Betty's got something to say, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you got a really big super chat from Sam Hung. I think he's really pleased with the Globe Killer. Hey, Sam, what's happening, man? Haven't seen you in a coon's age, man. Congratulations on your daughter, brother. Thank you. Yeah, shout out to Sam. It Tell might be the beginning of a new treadmill, John. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't you be talking about my treadmill. It uh, Just to let everyone know, my, my treadmill gave up the ghost after 13 years and thousands of miles. So the wake will be after this ball busters. Tony! Uh, you you can, okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. You can think of having traveled thousands. You actually went <laughs> absolutely nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the god awful paradox oh, he of got, it. He went round and round and round, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this trip's not over. That's a that's an inside joke. No one's gonna, <laughs> <laughs> no one's gonna get that. Um, Tony, I heard you rumbling Yo. in the background. Go ahead, sir. I was just shouting out something. Um, I just wanted to say. <clears throat> the ballers in chat, uh, M. Scott Veach, uh, and a few other people, they're complaining that the uh, the distance to the horizon can change because of looming. Well, even though looming doesn't apply the way you claim it applies, even if it did, the horizon itself would never change its distance. It would only ever change its ele its its perceived vertical alignment relative to everything else around it you wouldn't actually get the physical geometric horizon that's now apparent appearing behind the platforms. It would always be in front of the platforms. It would just be loomed up because it's supposed to be geometric. It doesn't change its distance. It might change its position on the horizon, 
but it doesn't change its distance. Whoa, 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 whoa. Didn't I just go over Looming? Yeah, you did. But um, we had M. Scott Veach and uh, a couple of morons in chat arguing whilst you were literally talking. They weren't listening. They were arguing that the horizon and the distance and, and the points that you were literally just talking about, they were arguing them points whilst you were describing them oh. and you, they weren't listening. Oh, got it. Okay. Any chance you can just repeat Hamlin's razor? Yes. Hamlin's razor. Don't attribute to malice, which could be explained by extreme stupidity. <clears throat> yeah, but I think we should have an exception for certain people because there are certain people that are obviously pushing deception. M. Scott Veach, daddy's an astronaut, lying to everybody. M uh, the rumpus lying through his teeth. Brenda, when it's, when it's a flat earth proof, she can't find the horizon. But when she knows it's a ball earth proof, she can find it like a motherfucker. These are the people that are pushing dishonesty. And it's worth pointing that out. But to most people, yeah, you can get stuff wrong. I get stuff wrong. Nathan gets stuff wrong. We make mistakes. So it applies to most normies like us. But it doesn't apply to these idiots that keep coming in time and time again for no good apparent reason and arguing their religious views. Well, it's double down syndrome. Well, yep, right. it is. That's yeah. okay. They are in written chat. Folks, if you have a problem and you want to stand up for your ball earth, no problem. See the info box below. There is a link to the voice chat here in Ballbusters. We'll welcome you in. There are three zero tolerance rules. There will be no ad homes. This is from both sides now. There would be no ad homs attacking the man or woman in lieu of the argument. Number two, no scatter gunning, one topic at a time. Each will be exhausted to conclusion before moving to the next. And be prepared to support every claim. And number three, be polite, speak slowly and coherently, and you're fine. We can you can stay in here as long as you follow those three rules, you are fine. If any of those rules are violated, you will be server mu muted immediately, then kicked from the Ballbusters voice chat. So just come on in, and we could talk about it. We're not done yet, but you can come on in now. Tenth, I didn't forget about you, sir. We'll get and Nathan and Betty. We'll get back to you guys. Tenth, yeah. Can you, thank you. Can you go back to the terrestrial refraction where you got yourself? Uh, on the bottom and Th Andrew Thomas Young on the top with the two statements. Yeah. One second. Let me get so back here. Right there. I'm waiting for it to show up. Yeah. Hold on one second. Okay. No, I guess it was the other one where he gave the, I, I actually do like this one a lot, but the other one where he says the atmosphere is curved. With the terrestrial oh, right. I got you. Yep, yep, yep. One second. Right here. <clears throat> okay. So, he's, they're already saying it's a curve. The sky, the atmosphere, even though gases can't curve, but, you know, that's their rhetoric. It's all curving. Well, curving over what? Well, the sphere Earth with a radius of 39.59. So right here, they're creating a trap for themselves because now they got to go by the radius, which is geometry. So if they want to live in this world of curvature, then they've got to stick to the curvature geometry. And this is what the black swan does. It shows that that curvature geometry doesn't work. Thanks, 10th. Betty. Yeah, um, nothing on the argument. I think that everything's been spoken about. Um, there were indeed going on in the chat about apparent horizons and and <laughs> geometric horizons. They simply don't get that. We're going to talk about that here in a second again. I have something for okay. them. I, 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 knew uh -huh. that they, I knew that they were going to bring it back up again, so I gave a little surprise on the next subject will be horizons, then ray tracing. I got them. So go ahead. Yeah, and I got two super chats for you, but also I want to do a shout out to Robert Bassana, who was in the chat. And he said that he's going to do some shows now. So he was in the chat. 
but uh, give me yeah, a shout out. Yeah, that's an announcement. I didn't. I sorry about that, Robert. I didn't make the announcement. We had all this black swan uh, uh, stuff going on that I forgot. That Robert says he's coming back. So he's going to be doing. Uh, I don't know what subjects he's going to be doing, but he's coming back here to YouTube. So get ready, guys. It's going to be fun. Welcome back, Robert. We missed you, man. And, and yeah, go ahead. Sure, we did. And uh, the two super chats for one is from Theo Mega Worthy, and he says the horizon, the horizon only exists in the eye or image. And you got a sticker, and it's a guy lifting weights. Keep it up, and it's from Av Rabbit. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate that, Anthony. Oh, you're... and another one. Sorry, another oh, one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's from Emma UK, and she says, "Come on, Bala, step up." They need a shower, Emma. Now, Tony, <laughs> I can tell that you wanted to say something, or it's, it's one of two choices. One, you either wanted to say something. Or you're not following my rules. Oh, uh, why? Well, what's the rule? What's the rule? I might not be following. You're you're never in here before we go over the rules, man. Never. So the rule is, stay on mute if you're not speaking. Okay, what, is that the rule? I, okay, so what if I wanted to say something? Am I breaking the rules then by not being on mute? No. You can you can come off mute and say something. Do you have something to say? Of course. Don't <laughs> argue as a flat earth proof. Argue as a ball earth killer. That's the strongest position by a mile. <laughs> something else, man. Nathan, sir, I didn't forget about you. Go well, ahead, sir. I've got something that's it's going to come from way out left field, but I'm going to put my neck on the line and say it anyway. So I think it's important that people realize that this needs to be fought as a globe killer rather than the flat earth proof. <laughs> I just didn't know if that had been stressed already. <laughs> no, that wasn't really what I'm going to say. What I was going to say is, I just went and I just asked Siri for a quick definition of geometry. I'll just read it out. So the branch of mathematics concerned with the properties and relations of points, lines, surfaces, solids, and higher dimensional analogs. Then it's got underneath it. A particular system of geometry and the shape and relative arrangements arrangement the parts of something. There you go. So we're talking about physicality. Not the optical anomalies, but the physical geometry. The bit you've told us we're living on for the last four years. Yeah, that, that word solids kind of <laughs> puts the, the knife in the heart right there. Bow. Solids. Yeah, we're talking about something physical. Anything on refraction, specifically looming? Yeah, you can't, you can't loom the horizon above the horizon. Number one, if you're going to argue that, you're going to be left with two horizons, one that your geometric mathematics is based on, but that violates the law of prediction. We only have a singular one horizon. And that horizon, if you're on a sphere, is geometric. It isn't, therefore we're not on a sphere. So you can't loom the horizon above the horizon. If you assert that you can, you've lost because you're then arguing that we don't have the sphere earth geometry you've argued. So arguing that it's looming is arguing not geometric the very thing you need for your geometric model. Also, by definition, the horizon has things looming with respect to it. So the horizon isn't looming above the horizon. It is completely non sequitur. Thank you very much. Exactly. Let's roll. Two more quick sections. I just wanted to stop here. The ballers, just because Anthony, Tony, Anthony Riley, Jedi mind tricked you about three weeks ago by telling you that this little white thing between, between the platforms was a boat, doesn't make it a boat. This isn't a boat, okay? 
Let's take a look at this. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Can I, can I just say that whether it's a boat, a buoy, or anything else, it's on the surface, it's very small, and it proves that no matter how much you guys wiggle, weasel, and squirm, we're seeing the base of the platforms. That's the important bit. So it doesn't matter what it is, it just matters that it's on the surface, and it's very small. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just a little red herring fallacy away. You can see the shadows here on the water, folks. Shadows. Shadows on the water. Anyway, if you look real oh, close... Maybe on... me interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt. So sorry to do it to you. Because you've done it throughout your presentation. I'm going to do it on your behalf now because you can't do it on your own behalf. <laughs> <laughs> right. This, I don't want to hear that repeated. I'm sorry, Kiwi. I know you've just discussed it and Anthony's point's the same, but you've said it last. I don't care about these shadows. Okay. I don't care less. Right. The argument is about the horizon. And like you're saying about you don't care if there's fling flamingos that are refracted on the bow of that buoy or Superman wearing a refracted cape on deck of the oil rigs i don't care about the shadows because the shadows are inconsequential to the actual argument and the modus tollens that's about the horizon so i just don't want people to hear that and go oh yeah i'm gonna start fighting that like it's the argument it isn't i just want to get nip that in the butt For the love of god don't use that as an argument the argument is about the horizon please people please i stand corrected thank you very much let me just stick with what i was trying to say I thought it was funny because they think it's a boat. If you look real close right here, you can actually see stuff on top of this thing. It looks like there's seals. Just want, just want to know, just a little sidebar, maybe lighten things up a bit, right? But I stand corrected. Nathan, you're absolutely right. That's not a boat, okay, ballers? Now we can move on. Horizon. It's a sealed container. It's a sealed container. Yes, it is. Then I'm bump. Tenth, you didn't even get that, man. Come on. What, are you sleeping? All right, Horizons. I knew that they were going to be talking about this. That's why I wanted to bring it back. I, I got these from National Geographic, the five definitions. I got one from the Encyclopedia Britannica, and I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you which one that is, and we'll go over it. So, again, listen closely. From National Geographic, the local horizon also called the geometrical horizon, is the visible boundary between the earth and the sky. So when you clowns say you can't see the visible, you can't see the geometric horizon, it's invisible. You hardly ever see it. It is the opposite of the definition of geometrical horizon, just to let you know. Number two, the geographic horizon. Well, what's that? Well, that's the apparent boundary between the earth and sky. AKA the geometric horizon is the apparent boundary between the earth and sky. <laughs> the sea level horizon is the geometric horizon at sea level. Well, the geometric horizon is, or the geographic horizon is the geometric horizon, making the sea level horizon the geometric horizon. Very simple. Number four, the astronomical horizon. This is from National Geographic. The astronomical horizon is the imaginary horizontal plane. It's imaginary. I could stop right there. I don't re need to read anything else. It's the imagination. I could disregard it. From Encyclopedia Britannica, horizon in astronomy, the boundary where the sky seems to meet the ground or sea. Yeah, that's the geometric horizon. Thanks. Appreciate that. And number five, the true horizon is the imaginary place. It's the imagination. I can drop it. We got you guys, man. You can't get out of it. Last one. This ray tracing nonsense. Now, if you haven't heard this, you will be hearing it. All right? I've heard it from Mick West. I heard other couple clowns talk about it. Let's just settle matters. Ray tracing. From Andrew Thomas Young, San Diego State University Astronomy Department, the subject matter expert. Some people have worried about how to apply the refraction law to such, to such a horizontal ray of light. 
because it does not cross any horizontal boundaries between denser and less dense air in a stratified atmosphere. In general, the curvature of the ray is different from the curvature of the Earth's surface. But here, we are only concerned with rays that bend just enough to follow the curve of the Earth. The simplest solution to the horizontal ray paradox. Horizontal ray paradox is to remind ourselves that rays are an unrealistic mental construct. In reality, we always have a beam of light. Infinitely narrow rays don't really exist. Thanks for your year. Have a nice day. Questions, comments. What can you say? They will say, I've heard people say that math is reality. But that's all ray, rays are math. They are, like you said, it's just, it's imaginary from, from their own priests. It's imaginary, their own authority. While the, why? and, huh? Why exactly? What, why, what's what? the difference? What's the objection, basically? Well, there's the argument they're making for rays, ray tracing, is that it somehow proves Earth curvature. It can't. It's imaginary. That's the point. What? Really? Well, yeah. that's going to be based on our based refraction nonsense anyway. So and it's not going to be actually based on actual optics. Right. That's the point. But look, ray tracing has been remarkably well developed over the last 20 years, I'd say. I've, I've seen it start up. I've seen what they've managed to make starting out in the 90s, for, for example, with Babylon 5. You, yeah, you but you're talking about video games. We're talking about reality. Now, but I'm just saying, you know, they've come far, and there's something to say for that. But must... what they, const they constantly drag in their R-based refraction nonsense. That's the problem. Well, that's the thing. In a video game, you can make the any shape or size you want, and ray tracing just is the, a complex mathematical formula to simulate what you might see in that world. And yes. so it all it's all based on fiction, which is right. what quantum erasers is read in the definition. But, it's, it's, but it's, hold on, there there's another funny detail to it, and Mark Sargent even talks about this. Look. Game designers know that when they have a world, right, that people that the gamers play in, they make the world flat. It's basically flat. Even they know it. Because if they would try to adapt to whatever they're doing to some kind of ball model, yeah, people get sick of that. They've actually tried that out at some point, and people get physically ill because it's so unnatural. This <laughs> is so. Yeah. Another little factoid from the gaming world. That's okay, but that yeah. doesn't yeah, it's we're dealing with reality and the earth curvature. Well, I understand the video games for ray tracing. I got I got the point. However, that's not what we're talking about. Uh anything else, Paula? No, not really. I mean the point was made, I was just focusing on that point that it is all imaginary and you can't presuppose earth shape or to, or prove or disprove anything about earth shape from ray tracing. It's ridiculous. Okay. Uh, anything on the horizons that I went over say, I, I know I shouldn't have brought up the ray tracing. That's my fault. I, I wanted to bring it in at the end, but I wanted to focus more on the horizon part on the five different definitions of horizons and, and get anyone's thoughts on that. Yeah, you can't shoehorn the effect of a horizon that's a physical geometric demarcation between land and sky to do any of the effects that they claim when they go refraction. If you take any of the definitions that you've just gone through and try and shoehorn in the horizon, say, looming above the horizon, or the mirage being miraged above the horizon, it's completely non sequitur. As soon as you start trying to shoehorn in their explanation for the geometric edge, moving beyond the platforms 
you suddenly end up in a non sequitur in terms of the description because it can't be shoehorned into something that's referencing the horizon. So it doesn't work. You can't have this effect shoehorned in to solve the problem of the black swan as much as they want to. Now, for me, I think this is one step beyond the win anyway. Now, I know why you're doing it, QE. You want to arm everyone with the, the debunkings when they go, refraction, which they will. And having a, a, a basis to understand that, no, this doesn't shoehorn into any of these five definitions or five effects of refraction. None of them work within that. But ultimately speaking, as soon as you start describing a refracted horizon, you're no longer dealing with a geometric horizon. So they've lost. They require a geometric horizon. They're arguing for Earth's geometry. That's their default position. It's the tenets of their religion. So as soon as they're looming their geometric horizon and putting another X next to this geometric horizon in their model, well, then that isn't the X in your model anymore, is it? So you no longer have that one unless you start arguing for there being two. So you don't have two horizons either, and looming it makes it non-geometric, a necessity for your model. As I say, this is checkmate. doesn't matter which way they move that king, it's going to get killed. Yes, sir. Isn't it beautiful? It is. It's brilliant. It, it, it makes me smile. And, you know, not that I didn't sleep well before. You know, I've mostly finished the debates each day and just... You know, don't give it much of a second thought if I'm ruthlessly honest. It sounds terrible. But I know the fundies do. <laughs> this is costing them a lot of sleep. <laughs> laugh. <laughs> well, laugh. hey, while, while all the ballers double down syndrome further deeper into the shithole, it's pretty much smooth sailing onto the apparent horizon for the flat earthers. So, it's going to be a good year for flat earth. Hmm. Yes, it is. Chocolate. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting here thinking about when I hear things like, oh, the geometric horizon is the horizon we can't see. And that just makes me laugh. Because so they're, they're saying that they used to argue for a horizon that we can't see. No, they didn't. And if there was a horizon we can't see, how would, how would boats disappear over it if we can't see it? Right? Like, come on, guys. It's ridiculous. It's beyond ridiculous how you're arguing for a horizon that we can't see. Because then we're not arguing about anything. The geometric horizon is the visible horizon. And all of these definitions, two of which I think were imagination, all leads to one horizon. We've always only had one horizon. And you don't have yours anymore because it's geometric and it's not. And that's what the black swan does. It shows you that this horizon is not geometric. So you can draw comparisons. It. You can draw comparisons with the gravity argument because in their model they need to have gravity and they can calculate for gravity. And the, even though they can't define it, they all believe that it's there. It's the same with the apparent horizon. We see the real horizon, the apparent horizon, but they've got to have this geometric horizon. That's like the gravity bit. They, there is no evidence of it. But they demand that it's there because it has to be there in their model. And they can't see, or they pretend they can't see, that because they can't identify where it is, it doesn't actually exist, which is a bit of a problem. Because you can't claim gravity if you can't prove it. You can't claim geometric horizon unless you can prove it. And if you're going to claim a geometric horizon, I'm going to claim a unicorn horizon, and it's 11 pixels below the apparent horizon. And it's definitely really a thing. I can't prove it, but it's definitely a thing because... I need it in my Pixies arguments or my whatever arguments I choose to pick at the moment in time. So claiming it just because you have to doesn't mean it actually exists. You've got to demonstrate it, which is the fundamental problem. You can't demonstrate a geometric horizon. Boom. But ju just look at the, t the, the use of that word, right? Parent horizon that now that, you know, that they're trying to call it now. Well, again, when did they ever call it an apparent horizon? Which is obviously redundant because it's already apparent. <laughs> but now they have to distinguish even further, so now it's an apparent, apparent position? Really? While, meanwhile, the, the position you're supposed to have, the geometric position, that's the one we can't see? You guys are done. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a wrap for the globe. Sorry. 
I take partial responsibility for that redundancy, which I know Q used to cringe over because I'd have about five things strapped onto it. The not actual apparent location of the non-physical horizon. You're like, my God, <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Just horizon will do. <laughs> Yeah, but we do things like that where we talk about, you know, things like the sun, where they're saying that, oh, it doesn't change angular size, so it's not changing, it's not actual size, <laughs> and it's not that, actual position. Like, sometimes we have to break it down like that for them. <laughs> that's, so. a very, that's a very good point. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up, Chocolate. Just because the geometric horizon is apparent doesn't make it non-physical. You have to understand why the geometric horizon is apparent, right? It's based on the radius, and it's based on the observer's height. It will change in your sphere paradigm. We're, ju we're just in your sphere paradigm now. It is The geometric horizon is apparent, right? Because it's the horizon. But the reasons why it is apparent doesn't make it non-physical. Wake up. Tenth. Ever since you cited Andrew Thomas Young and I being in California and he being in San Diego, I said, hey, this is interesting. So I started reading his literature. And it, it's funny because geometric is, is a math, right? And he says in his writings, the geometric horizon is a purely theoretical construct, not anything you can see. That's baloney. Hot. Well, yeah, but that's what he says about geometry. <laughs> geometry is a theoretical there, Andrew. Not if your sphere has a radius of 3959 miles. It's simple geometry. We need to get Andrew Thomas Young on this show. It, it gets right. even worse. He says it's a thought experiment. Oh, well, take that yeah, it is. Uh, hold on. Exactly. Take it as it is. It's an embedded confession. You don't need to jump down his throat and say, no, your religion says. Uh, take it for what it is. It's an embedded confession. If you're an ant on a beach ball, then the point that you can't see past the edge of the beach ball and its physicality is your geometric horizon as an ant on a beach ball. And what's stopping you seeing over the edge? Well, the physical edge of the ball that the ant is on. That's the geometric horizon. It's physical. It doesn't matter that if you raise the, the ant a millimeter or two, the apparent location based on its physical geometry will change. That's how it's apparent. I dictated by height, as per their model. It's not like this is new to us. However, as soon as you start moving it and looming it, it stops being physical. And that's what this is all about. They're claiming the physicality of our world is sphere-shaped. Based on what? Well, the geometry. And its physical nature. So up until now, we have people telling us about how oh, your excuse for the geometry blocking bottom of a boat is fleur perspective. Now what are they telling us? Well, it's obviously an optical position. <laughs> no, no, no. You've been telling us about the physicality of the world we live in and its geometry. Well, that physicality can't just be relinquished because you've come across a massive checkmate problem in the form of the black swan. No, 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 no. Still got your physicality. It's based on the geometry. We've taken that geometry and said, based on your geometry, Earth's not a sphere because it doesn't have a geometric horizon. That doesn't suddenly mean that Earth's horizon, which is still geometric, isn't physical. That's completely non sequitur. Anyway. Um, John, could you do us a favour? Could you recite the, the anomaly point that you mentioned before? Because, again, in, in Discord, there was a couple of no one's saying, oh, do you understand what an anomaly is? Do you want to readdress that for the morons, in, well, for the people in Discord that think that an anomaly is an acceptable explanation for why we, we have the platform's picture, please? Yeah, well, they have to define anomaly first. And like I said, you cannot have a geometric anomaly. It is set in stone. If the Earth has a radius of 3959 miles, then your geometry based on the observer's height is set in stone. I, I don't have to provide any other explanation. It's self-evident. Well, duh. Thanks. 
may I may I try? Back to my ant and ball example. So you have seven day test period for this ant, and every day it's placed on the same physical position, and it looks out to its physical geometric horizon. Now each and every day that goes past, that physical geometric horizon is the same place. It's the same physicality. There is no physical anomalies that can occur. Now, unless you claim that you're going to pump some more air into the beach ball, well, the anomaly would be that there's something physically changed with the ball. It's physically got bigger, or it's physically deflated and got smaller. That's an anomaly when you're talking about geometry. The physicality of it. So when you say it's got a geometric anomaly, what you're saying in literal terms is, the physicality has changed on this day. <laughs> or to put it another way, we're going to change the R value today. <laughs> no, 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 no. You've got a fixed R value. It's describing the physicality you're arguing for. That's called geometry. Now suddenly you're describing optical effects. What, for perspective? Yeah, I'm going to have that. And that's going to be shoved right back in their faces every time they start describing optical effects or their physical geometry. Oh, we're going to try and shoehorn in Fleur perspective now, are we? Because we don't have Fleur perspective. We have perspective, the effect that's been hijacked, turn Earth with vanishing points into Earth with physical geometry. And we don't have a geometric edge. Black Swan's debunked it. But I will be calling you Fleur perspective users when you try and weasel in this thing that is completely devoid in your geometric physical model that says the physical geometry of our Earth is sphere-shaped. So when you abandon the physical aspect of the geometric model you're punting, you're relinquishing the geometric model. You're relinquishing the idea you're on a sphere suddenly. So cognitively, this is going to be very painful for the fundies because you can't square this circle. No one can. It's checkmate. Game over. I, I would also add that anomaly is like phrase the exception that proves the It doesn't prove it true. It disproves it. Proving is like a proving ground for a car. It tests the car. So by scientific method or whatever is going on, you try to disprove and falsify. So talk about anomalies or exceptions. We're talking about things that disprove the previous claim or belief. That's just the whole idea behind a black swan, is it only takes one to disprove the claim that there are no black swans. And so if the claim is that there is earth curvature, and we have proof that there is that their model that they're claiming is false, that is a black swan, not because there's only one, but because it's the exception that tests the rule. It proves it false, just to make that point about the word anomaly. Oh, thank you, Paula. That was something I meant to bring up earlier, but I didn't have a notepad. But there's going to be a handful of globe heads that, once they get the argument, to cognitively feel better, will resort back to shoving white swans in our faces. We've already had it. Sean Hawkins did it in the chat while you were bringing up the picture that you actually say could be a black swan after all. Well, they just essentially fall foul of the black swan <laughs> fallacy. <laughs> so the black swan fallacy is to ignore the anomaly and just go back to the original assertion. So in this instance, we'll have people that, that say, well, there you go. Explain why the oil platform's behind the horizon today. White swan. You go, who cares? And it needs to always be that if it's at the physical leading edge of a sphere, as you're now asserting it is, when they just go straight to white swans. That's why you just whisper gently in their ear, white swan. No. No, no, white swan. No, no, no. Listening. Whisper white swan. That's what that is. And they just shove a picture of the horizon in front of the oil platforms, make them aware. That's a white swan. Well, the assertion by virtue of a geometric model necessitates that you cannot go beyond a certain point based on its physicality. As soon as you have, as Paul has just described, which is why I'm tagging on the back of it, a situation where you break that, for instance, by analogy, a manufacturer of cars says, these brakes always work, therefore this will be a production car. 
when you find the anomaly where the brakes stop working, then it doesn't become a production car. You've got to work out something else because that's broken. It doesn't suddenly stop being broken because the following day you test it again and like the previous 20 or 30 times you didn't have a braking anomaly. If the anomaly's still there. You can't just ignore it. That's the black swan fallacy. Well, let's just pretend we didn't have the anomaly. Well, no, the, anom the anomaly destroys the geometry. The assertion that Earth has a geometric edge is now dead. So the pe for those of you out there that just start throwing white swans out there and going, look, here we go. Today I'm going to decide that we do have a physical geometric edge of a sphere for a horizon today. And they ignore the previous anomaly. That's the black swan fallacy. Subtly different to how we're using it with the Karl Popper analogy. But that's something we've had thrown at us as well. This is the black swan fallacy. Normally, when they're ignoring the actual evidence, in other words, they're guilty of it themselves. <laughs> yes, they're guilty of it themselves, exactly. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, articulated perfectly. Thank you. But notice also how some of the ballers that kind of, maybe not openly, admittedly, understand the black swan arguments are getting kind of jealous. And they're like, they want to know if the flat earth model or whatever also has kind of a black swan you know because yeah that's just the basic response behavior but the thing is that yeah on the flat earth we yeah the the apparent horizon is just going to be the apparent horizon it doesn't really matter you know as as long as the air clarity is enough you can just see incredibly far and that's just how it's going to work it's how all actual photography or actual film footage that can be confirmed to be real has been made with a horizon, unless it's in a hole. And the ballers, yeah, they need this geometry. They need this geometrical edge. It's a natural consequence of their model. And they had this horizon as the supposed lead leading edge of a sphere for such a long time, just taking that for granted. And now suddenly it's being swept from underneath their feet. Suddenly they're tumbling. And now they have to double speak their way out of it. And they have really nowhere else to go. I've seen that too, Owen. Basically, they throw a red herring at you and say, well, where's this? And they give you a false equivalence analogy in your model. And you're like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> just this total red herring. Let's just to the motor stolens and address that and then maybe we'll move on to something else not that we have a model but phrase it that way for anybody who might have a model that they want to reify in the form of a flat earth a map or whatever but yeah it, you know it's just a red herring in other words just a an obfuscation tactic to get you away from the actual argument about the horizon and its geometric impossibility in the black swan image so yeah just a red herring black swan you could also call it a two quoque fallacy, which is you too is what it means. So what that's basic that's more specifically what they're doing is they're saying, Oh, we've got a argument will so do you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, guys. Um Can I can I shout out some super chats? Yes, ma'am. As a red herring. As a red herring. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. Black swan. Okay, <laughs> so we have one from Rakia Life. Don't forget proof of the flat stationary plane. Oh my god, sorry, I need to start over. Don't forget proof of the flat stationary plane is proof of the creator, Black Swan Matters. And uh, Theo Mega Wordy says um, ray tracing is computer graphics, not reality. Uh, LOL. Well, um, and then El Yonke says, um, Black Swan isn't BS, wink. Keep up your good work, QE and FED. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's go ahead and open up the Ball Busters voice chat. Now, for any guests, I want to remind everyone of the rules. As I said, the, the rules are stated. In the info box below, just in case you're unsure, they will be posted in there for every Ballbusters episode. They state, 
Everyone entering the Ballbusters Discord voice chat is clean slated. That means any bad history between guests and panel members will be put aside and not spoken of. So don't speak of it. If you do speak of it, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to mute you and then kick you. There are three zero tolerant rules. No ad homs. That is attacking the man or woman in lieu of the argument. Number two, no scatter gunning. One topic at a time. Each will be exhausted to conclusion before moving to the next. Be prepared to support every claim that you make. Number three, be polite. Speak slowly and coherently. If any of these three are violated, you will be server muted immediately, then kicked from Ballbuster's voice chat. We need a reasoned discussion here. People are yearning for it. I'm going to give it to them. Hopefully there's no questions. Righteous. Yeah. Do we have anyone in the Ballbusters VC chat? I'll tell you what. Let's just make it easy. Go from the top. Anyone that's not a Ballbuster, questions, comments, and rebuttals. That'll make it easy for you, sir. So, Flat Earthers, do that. Look. That's fine. If they're in the Ballbusters voice chat, if they have something to say, go ahead and take them off mute. And then after they're done, put them back on mute. Thank you. All right, we'll start with Global Sexual. You got anything you want to chat? No, I'm, for, I'm cool. Carry on. Next, we got Oblivion. Sorry, I'm in the middle of cooking. <laughs> Listening. All right, I was in the middle of eating, too. <laughs> Uh, I haven't heard from this guy before, Pool Dog. Maybe he's got something to say. Is that chocolate? I've heard from me before. Hi, guys. I just wanted to say that, you know, after five years of, like, listening to people say the boats go over the edge, boats go over the edge, and, and the black swan comes along, I'm just so happy. You guys have done a great job, man. Thank you. All right, next we got Redman. What's up, Redman? Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, this this is the sniper shot for the ballers. They don't want none of it. They want none, they want none, day of what's going on right now. They're trying to figure out a way. It's not going to happen. Go ahead. Oh, and I forgot Kings. What's up, Kosher? Righteous, one second. Righteous, you're chopping. What's up, Righteous? What's up, Huey? I'm good, just listening. You guys uh, uh, continue on. Thank you. Righteous, did you drop out and come back in again? Uh, it's my internet. It's almost done. Okay. Next, we got Unorthodox. Unorthodox, you're clean slated, sir. Did they drop? I don't see the name. Reified no, Black. He's, he's named Reified Black Swan Fallacy. Oh, okay. You're righteous, you're breaking up a bit, brother. Betty. Yes. <laughs> no, don't say stupid. Um... <laughs> Can you take over for Righteous? Because his, his mic is awful. Yeah. Can you please take over uh, where he left off on the list, please? Yeah, we're going to run M1 Swanson. I'll take you off mute. You might be on mute. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. How you doing, everybody? I just wanted to say thank you, QE, because I am having so much fun with 
playing with these globe heads. Every single time, it goes in the exact order you said, where they try to debunk, and once they get to refraction, they turn around and run away. It's it's awesome, and uh, I've been doing it every single day, and I ain't gonna stop until we get everybody. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. That's what I want. Take it to everyone. Kudos. I think that's the, the people that we uh, got in the server. What? Uh, yeah, this, and the rest we know about. Maybe Jose wants to say something? Wait, wait, wait. Maybe? Before Jose says something, are you kidding me? <laughs> Sphere Earth Believers. You're not going to come on here and talk with us reasonably so the audience can hear your case? Unbelievable. This speaks volumes. Listen, fence sitters, flat earthers already know it's flat. Fence sitters and people new to this discussion. If this isn't speaking volumes to you, I don't know what is. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Betty. Okay. I think that's Jose. Maybe you want to say something that uh, I just skipped you. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll make a comment. So um, we've been hammering the black swan since, uh, you know, QE formulated formulated the whole thing. And, uh, you know, on Discord, ever since that formulation of that black swan, it's been absent of Globers. And the ones that do go pretty much say exactly the same thing as you guys covered here, day to day, in and out. Uh, some say that the horizon isn't even visible. Some say there's multiple horizons. One said that the apparent horizon is looming. I mean, it's nonstop with the, you know, with the, with the fallacies there. But other than that, we've uh, we've all changed most of our names to something Swan just to trigger them, and they've kind of been absent for the past couple days. Black Swan. And I, I would like to point shout out. Shout out to Discord, Jose. I'm sorry, Paula. Yeah. I, I like I to shout out to 24 7 Flatter Discord. If you guys aren't a part of it, uh, feel free to join it. You can always search it on Discord servers, or I'll post a link in the live stream right now. I was just going to say that. For all the slick presentations, all the nice videos, all the other things that have gone on to this point, till the Black Swan was presented, it's only at the point where it was presented that the ball earthers suddenly abandoned their curve calculators and started invoking atmospheric conditions and perspective and all these other things that have been our argument. So no one can say that this is nothing, that this is just a white swan. They can't say that because something radical happened, as Jose was just talking about, for example, that the ball earthers are scrambling now all of a sudden since the black swan was presented. So if anybody wants to say it's nothing, it's, it's you know, we've been saying this all along, well, then what, what changed? What's different this time? It, it's, the reaction tells us everything. And on a slightly different subject, I think it's important that we understand that we should be fighting this as a globe killer and uh, not a flat earth proof, <laughs> just, just in case that hasn't been mentioned get, already. <laughs> get your own lines, you. Stop cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for a serious point to come from Nathan. I, I was still waiting then, and he pulled it again on me. Not again, mister. Betty. What do you want? <laughs> you want me to say stupid? <laughs> so there's nobody else. Uh, there's no, a but to see Adam is, has come to honor us with a visit. Adam Adam's me. the best human being on earth. <laughs> right, Adam, God. sir, welcome. Evening, guys. What's up, Adam? I was the, uh, the mix shall inherit the earth. Indeed, I, I'm waiting. <laughs> well there does seem to be a baller in here named Eddie I don't know if he wants to he or she wants to say something I don't know I've unmuted him Eddie you can talk if you want to uh, to Eddie he went on mute all right, Adam, how's it going today, sir? Your thoughts? 
I've missed everything. Like I said, I've um, I was busy at the football. Um, busy with mates watching Forest beat Leeds, so uh, somewhat distracted. I've literally got in, had a bit of tea, and then uh, just just joined now. So what I miss? <laughs> Um, we are in the ball. Just, just flat at him. Hold on, hold on, go ahead. <laughs> hold on, go ahead, Nathan. Tell him what he missed. Well, I think it's important that we all remember that we should be fighting the black swan argument as a globe killer and uh, not a flat earth proof, Adam. So, as long as we all understand that, we'll, we'll all get along just fine. <laughs> Adam, I'm being bullied. <laughs> You've not had a flood of uh, ballers coming to show you the well. geometric horizon then. We've had oh, no what geometric. We, I'm exactly. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We've had no ballers come in, Adam. That's the tell. Go ahead, Adam. Sorry to interrupt. I just, I think I could probably have a little guess where it's been, but um, I'd just like to say, I, I think it was Easter I heard earlier, mate. I did it on last week's RM show a little. And the bit I loved is the Lotus Times, like I say, I think it's very powerful. It's a great ball busting tool um, that we've got. And uh, I just hope I was with it. What For whatever reasons we're not engaging at the moment or, or, or seeing it, hopefully we can uh, get together and realize how powerful it is, irrespective of, you know. What gobshite gave it us all? Hashtag same team. Exactly. You know I'm a bit flaky, hippie like that. Do you know what I mean? And I know there's there's different people out there and there's different personalities out there, but at the end of the day, the uh, the black swan doesn't have a personality. Black swan. I've met him. He's a miserable git. It's not about personalities, it's about the strength of the weapon that we've got. And um, this past week for me has been hilarious. Uh, listening to what they frantically scatter around to try and bring to the table and contradict. And I think it was Nathan that was saying it now. It's, it's not even that anymore. It's just downright lies. Thank you, sir. Betty, Cheers, anyone man. else in the Discord server? If not, we'll do a final thoughts roundup. I'd like to add it. Go ahead, Arwen. You know, yes. So as a, a good foundation, I totally get where Nathan's coming from. Saying that, yeah, well, not a flat earth proof. You know, you don't need to go there. But hey, if you're confident <laughs> enough, Riley. if you really know all the details, then you can kind of go there and basically show the ballers, look, we don't really have a black swan because it all depends on the air clarity, on the refraction conditions as to how far we can see. And everything else is just as is. So we don't have this black swan that if it is violated, if some geometrical curve or something is violated, that our model or our presumption that the Earth is flat is then incorrect. The flat Earth doesn't have a black swan like that. It's as simple as that. We don't... To me, it's nothing to do with flat Earth. It's about slapping a ball. And if you're going to use the analogy... For me, the ultimate point is that there's, there's never been a bloody white swan. I thought I saw a white swan, but it was so far away, I realized it couldn't have been a white swan because it was too far away. The, the best part is, like, I think everybody has noticed how the, the ballers' arguments have changed. And to say it's just an everyday thing, talk about this particular observation well this observation was done how long ago uh, like I, I don't know 2016 offhand 2016 yes October. this observation was done October 2016 wow. right 
So this one observation has been done in 2016, and it's now 2020, and the ballers have not changed their argument so hard since then. Well, what was the thing that changed? It was the argument that was placed on this observation. It was the weaponization of the modus tollens on this observation that's made it so powerful. Because what we did was focus on the horizon. What I should say what John did, QE. Focus on the horizon and base that on your radius that you can't change. So that's the difference. And that's what's killing you guys is because now we're not talking about boats at the horizon or buildings being obstructed or why we can't see all the sand at the beach. Nonsense like that. Now I ask you, why is this horizon that is supposed to be 1.2 miles away, is it way further than 9? Which is an impossibility on your geometric ball. I so, have a comment to say real quick. Uh, I think it would be very wise for all of us to actually go back and revisit all our old arguments from 2015 when we started, most of us. And look for more of these, you know, and apply the, geom the geometric horizon to these uh, observations that we have, like past ones. I'm sure Ranty has so many that he hasn't, like, he didn't even realize probably at the moment. Yeah, I'm sure they're all over the place. I agree. But that's the thing. They've, they've been all over the place, right? But it hasn't had the same impact because we haven't asked a particular question or applied the particular logic to what we're seeing. Right? So it just makes it all the more more obvious. And that's what makes it strong. Can, can I just clear up a bit of confusion? Because there is, obviously, it's been discussed now, and I asked you before the show, Kiri, and you said if it, if it comes up, and it has. So the confusion from our own side where they're describing this, these types of pictures that are on screen now as being white swans. Well, in the analogy, not the logical consistency, but in the analogy, all white swans are globe Earth horizons. In other words, the natural assumption by most of the Western world, what we're fighting against, the whole point of us being here, is that most people think the horizon's the geometric edge of a sphere. That's the status quo. So when our own side starts saying, no, 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 these are actually white swans, it's like, no, you've misunderstood the analogy. Because if they were all white swans, everybody in the Western world would appreciate that we can see further than the globe claims. As soon as you have the words globe claims, the only reason you're disclaiming that is because what the globe claims is the white swan. That's the standard rhetoric. Now, in an ideal world, everybody would be a flat earther. They'd all appreciate they've been lied to. And everyone would just know that the horizon is not a physical geometric edge of a sphere. Hundred years from now, if everyone woke up tomorrow to the realization that they're not living on a sphere, hundred years from now they might actually never even consider that the horizon's anything other than a not actual location, a non-physical location. So it might not even be the case that you'd want to consider it, as the analogy suggests. But the only reason, and this is the frustrating part for me, that people are saying, "Well, no, that's a white swan." Like, why are you calling a horizon a swan again? <laughs> because, because it's been phrased as a black swan well the analogy when, when it's been phrased that way is to give the contrapositive to the claim that a horizon is a globe horizon and that is the, the status quo that is the white swan so the exception is where you have something that violates the geometry that most people are under the assumption of i.e. when it violates globe geometry and unfortunately, to, to the guy who just spoke in Discord, or fortunately, depending on what, which way you want to look at it, use Ranty as an example. Let's uh, stick with Ranty. Ranty's got loads of black swans. I already know which ones he's got that are black swans. It was pretty obvious almost immediately which ones were black swans and which ones weren't. However, this particular observation is quite unique in terms of the way you've got these very structured things that give you markation points or demarcation points along the viewing uh, distance. So because they're marking out 
how far you are going out along the flat plane we look over and then seeing the horizon, you can say categorically, this horizon is at this distance. Now, if you've just got a backdrop of land, it doesn't mean that it's, it's not as useful, but you're into just the horizon with nothing to reference it. In other words, you're into the, the limited angle at the bottom of whatever is technically sat on top of the horizon, regardless of where it is in, in the majority of Ranty's images. So this particular image is, is extra specially unique. It doesn't mean it's the only black swan. Far from it. But the ones that show a geometric impossibility for a horizon are other black swans as opposed to white swans. Until we are no longer under the cosh and understanding that we're on a sphere, as most of the Western world is still brainwashed with, until that's the case, white swans are geometric horizons. That's just the way it is. Now, uh, Anthony's kind of <laughs> the reason I've joked about it three or four more times is because we have got the undebunkable checkmate position with this modus tollens argument. And to, to weaken it for any reason or to sort of rearrange the Karl Popper analogy, it just seems futile. Why bother? Just If you don't like the example, just ignore it. But it's detrimental to our position to essentially say, no, 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 look, we're looking at what seems to be over a flat plane. That's the only way you can map it out if you were doing ray tracing for the sake of argument, if you were arguing it as a flat earth proof. But then you haven't debunked anything. There is many moves that you can make on that chessboard from the assertion, as Anthony's rightly pointing out, when you use it as just yet another flat earth proof. Well, you're brushing under the table something that's, that, her, as Paula's been pointing out, set the cat amongst the pigeons, set the cat amongst the swans, because they're all flapping away and they're all suddenly in different story mode. Everyone's got a different story. No one can, can agree on what the horizon is. It's essentially total chaos on the globe side. So there's no rebuttal to this. The only thing they can do is flap or lie. So that's what we've got. So if you can't recognize that on your, our own side now, and, and instead of utilizing it to devastating effect, you decide to sort of diminish it, that's disappointing. If, and it tells me you, you're not recognizing what's currently going on around the scene. You will. You all will. Globe heads and flat earthers alike. It may take some time. Somebody out there who's a bit more technically savvy might make that countdown timer that I described at the beginning of the show. Countdown to the understanding of modus tollens in the form of the black swan. Maybe the counter for globe earth and flat earth can run side by side. <laughs> Who knows? But just know this. The globe can be described as debunked. Not in a lackluster, ha ha, look, I've got a picture that debunks the globe and then it gets argued about endlessly. No, the globe is officially debunked. It is watertight. There is no way around it. Black Swan. Black Swan. Black. And I well, my show. As yes, you can. Show, it was very I'm well said, my... Nathan. It was very well said, Nathan. You may plug your show, sir. So after this show finishes, as soon as this, I've set it scheduled for ten thirty. But as soon as this finishes, I'll press go premiere now and the live chat which will end when this finishes you can all 189 of you go over to the fed uncut and after show it is new material so check it out it'll start as soon as this live stream finishes and that should be pretty quick because we're going to wind it up final thoughts paula um not anything i haven't said probably three or four times um but yeah i, I think it, the point is worth emphasizing that it's the reaction, it's the timing of the reaction theories about multiple horizons that didn't happen until you presented the Black Swan video, the, the image and the argument, the Modus Tollens argument. And for anyone on either side to brush it away is just inconceivable because Again, the reaction happened because of that presentation. If it was just another white swan, nothing, nothing would have changed, and they'd still be going to their current calculators. That, that's really all I have. Thank you. Arwen, final thoughts, sir? Yes, yes, definitely. So I'd like to respond to uh, some of the things that were said. Uh, mainly that, yeah, that one photograph is definitely one of the most beautiful black swans in all their glory you know it definitely is 
and there's many black swans around it. But this whole situation and what QE, QE has brought to the table for everyone is really the esoteric, deeper laying meaning of what the black swan stands for. It is about the academics of the understanding of the example, the historical example. That is what this all is really about. And it, the black swans were always there. It's just up to us now to really start to get it and understand what we're looking at and the consequences of it. And that is the true power of the black swan. Thank you, sir. Chocolate. Um, I don't know if I could add too much more than that. I, I agree. And it, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see how detrimental this is to their argument and to see them flopping, but flopping it, it's, I mean, I, I don't mean to laugh and make light of it, but it's kind of funny, when, again, when you say this observation has been out since 2016, and it's never had such an impact until now. Well, why is that? And like everybody said, it's because of this argument that's been placed on top of it to make it, <laughs> I almost want to say, reach the level of Super Saiyan <laughs> as far as an argument. So, <laughs> I mean, go forth and just destroy the ball with this because that's what it does. Everybody, just take it and apply the modus tollens, give it its guns and send it out to destroy the globe because it's done. Globe is a wrap. So, good show, good presentation, John. Always, always glad to be here. Thank you. Tenth. Yeah, I want to read this short description of geometry. Geometry is a branch of mathematics concerned with questions of shape, size, relative position of figures, and the properties of space. I remember in school when I was in math class, if I got something wrong, uh, the teacher would you know, check it with a red mark and say, you, you didn't get this one then I'd have to stay after class and see what I did wrong in the calculations. When the ballers give us an Earth radius of 3959, and it's based on the observer height where the horizon would be to that spherical shape, there can only be one answer to each observational height when that measurement's being looked for. At one foot, it's this. At five foot, it's this. At 35 foot, it's this. So the war is not against us or you. The war is against geometry now. I All I got to say is good luck, ballers. Thanks, Dan. Adam, sir. <clears throat> um, what we said, pretty much, well, what to say. The only, and if you'd indulge me, I'm really not had the opportunity to do so, but not so indulgent me. Um, Black Swan. Thank you. Nathan, sir. Yeah, I've got nothing to add. I'm, I'm content to say it's game over, checkmate, and just just because it hasn't been said already, it's important that we take this a globe killer <laughs> flat earth proof. <laughs> so just, just take that in, under advisement, everyone. Thank you for that, sir. Betty, final thoughts? Any last-minute admin? Um, no last-minute admin, but I do have to thank all the people that have super chatted because they were there in abundance, and it's really great to see them do that. Um, yeah, and I think it's time for all these ballers to step into the light, and there's enough fun on Flat Earth as to... Maybe more than on the globe side. So step into the light, people, and see the truth. Black Swan. Hey, thanks to all the ball busters and all the participants on the show today. Uh, I'm a bit disappointed, not surprised, but disappointed that the 
no sphere earth believers came on to defend their sphere like i said that should speak volumes to everyone listen guys flat earthers take this number one ball killer and give it to everyone you know the ball stops here